Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the February 2019 previews episode. And joining me is George uh, from the still defunct George and Tony Entertainment Show. Hey, George. Hello, Eric. Hello, listeners. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and uh, also joining uh, George and myself is uh, our very special guest. Uh, this is Troy Jeffrey Allen. He is from Previews World itself. Troy, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, guys. That's uh, yeah. I'm here representing Previews World, and uh, I've already gone through the catalog and I've earmarked numerous things. So <laughs> I'm 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 completely ready. Eric, we have to behave, man. I know we have a person actually from the catalog here. <laughs> oh no, I'm nervous. <laughs> it's you know, okay. Wish, you don't have to behave. You know, Eric, I wish I wish you would really warn me about these things so I would know. Now I've got to tear up all my notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, George, you could do what I do, and I just I just barreled through uh, on my notes just like I normally do with you, and I've got a, a multitude of of new comics and interesting comics to, to talk about. So I guess we'll we'll kind of see where we end up with this because as as longtime listeners of the previews episodes know, George and I tend to talk uh, well into the night, uh, uh, which uh, normally we record at night. So you know, George is usually going to bed the next technically the next day but uh, to accommodate <laughs> I'm going straight to work usually after our <laughs> wow. Wow. but to accommodate uh Mr. Allen's schedule um we are recording uh my, well my time it's early afternoon but it's it's uh, early evening for them uh so I really appreciate you guys taking the time uh, uh today to to talk about previews mm -hmm. I appreciate um, it. so uh Troy if you don't mind um uh could you tell the listeners uh, what you do for Previews World and uh, uh, why you're why you're on the show? What what is it that uh, Previews World is wanting to do in terms of uh, podcasters like like ourselves? Um. So yeah. So my my official title is consumer marketing editor. Uh, I've been with the company for about oh boy, wait a minute, I'm about to forget about three years. Um. And uh, you know, uh, I've been in charge of like pretty much engaging with consumers more. Uh, I, as a kid, grew up with the previous catalog. I used to go to comic shops, you know, when I was about 10 or 11 or 12. Um, and uh, I would see the catalog. And for me, I just would pick it up just to look at things, you know? Like, it was kind of like the option for when you didn't have enough money to buy all the comics, you could at least look at the comics that, that were going to come in the future, you know? Yes. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I definitely grew up with the catalog. And uh, when I had a chance to work for Diamond, um, you know, I, I noticed that, like, people were familiar with it, but people weren't sure necessarily how to use it all the time or what, what, what purpose it served. And I think it's because a lot of people had an experience similar to mine where it was like they just look at it. And that's it, you know. Um, and, you know, of course, in the age of the Internet, like, of course, like, the how to what to do exactly with a catalog changes like pretty drastically so uh um so yeah this is my job is to just engage with the consumers um you know talk to them about uh things that are upcoming things that are out now um make sure they stay excited um and you know just let them understand that you know uh comic shops are community hubs you know this is the you know this is a uh, Comic shops are very much are, are where the culture of comics comes from, and we need to like you know maintain that and protect that, and uh, you know also steer it into the future. So that's what I'm here to do. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I have to admit, uh, when you uh, tapped me on the shoulder, as it were, uh, on Twitter, I was I was very surprised um, <laughs> uh, that you did that. But I really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah. I, I, what you just described, I think, is that's that's a really great thing that previews is doing. Um, uh, that you're doing on behalf of previews. Uh, so I really appreciate you wanting to engage with the fans uh, of comic books and, uh, and more importantly, help out local comic shops. I thought that was a really yes. cool aspect. And I know that's yeah. something that you do on the, uh, on YouTube for the previews world. Uh, it's the weekly. Yeah. Show. Previous world weekly. Weekly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm yeah. Sorry. yeah. Previous world weekly, yeah. uh, with your co-host. And because uh, you 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 spotlight a, a local comic shop, I think towards the end of the episode, right? 
Mm-hmm. Every every week we spotlight the yeah. shop. We do this. Uh, so just a small pitch for previous World Weekly. Um, uh, yeah, we do this weekly show. Uh, it's in the title, of course. And uh, we basically give people a rundown of what's at comic shops. But we also try to engage the previous world audience and you know find out what they're excited about. We give our own very biased picks. And then we also talk about some of the stuff that's uh, in comic shops that are like the big ticket items, you know, like the big Marvel and DC image stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we do a little bit of a community outreach. And part of that is Social Swamp, which we do, which is always a lot of fun. Um, and Social Swamp is, uh, for example, last this past week we asked people who should play Batman in the new Batman movie ah, whenever that whenever whenever that Matt Reeves movie does come out and uh, we had some reactions to that and then also we do comic shop shout out where we allow people to just shout out their comic shop and spotlight them um, and I think that's particularly important because I not only did I go to comic shops as a kid but I worked in comic shops I worked at mm-hmm. a comic shop for about roughly ten years. Um, I did it. I worked there when I was in college. Um, I worked there when I was out of college. And even when I had a full time nine to five job, I worked there on the weekends just because I liked working there. Um, so, you know, I, I'm really am big on just comic shops. Like I would I would I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to go to anywhere else to get my my comic fix personally. And um, I think it's important that we show people that there are a lot of different types of comic book stores and that every state, every city has a different culture, but it's all part of the same comics culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny you say that you worked at a comic shop for for a while just on the side and stuff just because you love it because Mm -hmm. when my comic shop opened, Boy, did I, I tried to hint to them and say, hey, if you need a little part-time help, I'll do it for free. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, you know, I, I had a T-shirt that said it on it. And for some reason, they just did not uh, – they didn't get the message. Right, right. Yeah. No, actually, yeah it you know, seems like it could be a lot of fun. No, no you know what's funny? Um, I, we used to get people all the time who would come into the shop and they'd be like, oh, I'd love to work here. Like, you know, oh, you're so lucky to work here, et cetera, et cetera. And yesterday – when I was walking out of out of my office, I was walking out of the building, and I happened to I was crossing the parking lot. This guy pulled up, pulled over, and he's like he like waved to me from across the uh, across the parking lot. He was like, "Are you guys hiring?" <laughs> Which I thought was very funny, and. He was like, you know, I do graphic design. I just love to be around the comics and just like you know, just be inspired. And it was just, it's so funny that like people still do that. Like even like years later, even though I'm not in the comic book store, people come up to the diamond offices and want to, want to still work there for that reason. So, Well, that guy, <laughs> but that guy pretty much put it in a nutshell. Why? It's not that it's not work. It's not that mm-hmm. there isn't stress involved, mm-hmm. but it's something about being around like-minded people. And yeah. actually, you know what they say, you should always do what you love if, yeah. and, it, it, and it's not work. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. I can see where that guy's coming from. And he kind of put it in a nutshell when he asked you. And plus the way yeah. you even presented it when, when you used to work at a comic shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still go there. So, yeah, yeah. I'm all for it. <laughs> how, so how far away is the uh, your local comic shop from from uh, where you work? Nine to five. Um, so I well, so I have. I'll give the shout out to my to my comic shop, which is Alliance Comics and Games in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, that's the one I worked at for ten years, and I still go there on Sundays to pick up my my fix, you know. Um, but I also. Uh, when I'm feeling lazy, I go down the street to Alternate Worlds, which is also in uh, Timonia, Maryland. And that's like just like a hop, skip, and a jump away. And I recently raided their dollar bin and got a bunch of Peter David X Factor. So I'm really excited ooh. to read that. Nice. <laughs> Everybody actually, listening is going, ooh, yeah. right now. Right? Uh, yeah. uh, I actually have yeah. the, the, the Marvel trades of X Factor, but I haven't, I haven't started mm-hmm. them. So I'm very, you know, it's Peter David. So I, I, you know, I have David. to read it. <laughs> actually, and yeah, and actually, uh, he's got the Spider-Man book coming out, so I'm actually oh, definitely right. going to talk about it. When we oh get yes, to that, yeah, yep, I have that mm-hmm. on my list as well. <laughs> so you said uh, you started at previews, uh, what about three years ago? About three years ago, if I, you know, it's this is how my brain works. I'm trying to remember. It was like it was after Captain America: Civil War. No, it was before Captain America: Civil War. So that's like 2016. So mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, three years ago in Maryland, right? Uh, yeah, it's located in Maryland. Mm-hmm. So, so easy yeah. commute for you? Do you ever work from home? How, how does that work? I mean, obviously, you have to be in the studio to film the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have, we definitely have different offices, um, uh, and so we have the main office, which is where a lot of the retailer serv- retailer services stuff is. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have Diamond Galleries, and then we have Comic Wow Studio, and uh, we shoot the show at Comic Wow Studio. Um, and, is that Maryland uh, also? That's also Maryland, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we, of course, have warehouses. Uh, there's a warehouse in the south, and I always forget where in the south. And there's a warehouse uh, in Pennsylvania, I want to say. Mm. So, yeah. 
So yeah, it's, op- it's an operation that kind of spreads out across the country. So was this uh, uh, the, the 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 current position you have with Previews World? Is that something that you pursued, or did uh, did someone at Previews contact you and say, "Hey, we'd love to have you on the team"? How, how did you end up uh, with with this? It sounds like a great job. Yeah, um, I uh, so I actually uh, was working for. You can look this up on my. You can find this online. So I guess <laughs> no big deal. I was working for Ancestry dot com. I got laid off, and um, I, but I was still floating into my comic shop every week and like reading comics because I just loved them. And uh, uh, I had been wanting to work for Diamond. It's just Diamond always seemed like a logical progression for me because I'm in Maryland and I worked at a comic shop for ten years. So, like I had done self publishing. Like you know I. I become very familiar with the Baltimore comic scene. And so they had a job opening for social media. Um, and I've done plenty, I had done plenty of that um, on, on top of that, just like as a side gig. So I went ahead and applied. And uh, a lot of the conversations we had at that point in time with uh, the marketing department was like, what can we do different? And uh, it's been an ongoing conversation about what we can do different. And I think that we're, Actually, getting to a point where I think the consumers will really, really, will really be able to use previewsworld.com as like a, a source to like you know just have fun with the genre, the world of comics, I should say. So, yeah, I know I uh, in 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 past uh, episodes and sometimes posts at uh, at my blog, I've I've often used uh, previewsworld.com to find out more information about you know more recent comics that were solicited. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in case I didn't have the the physical catalog nearby, uh, so mm-hmm. I, I always appreciated being able to access that information at the website. Yeah. So um, uh, I I have one more question. Uh, I don't know if George has anything else for you before we dive into the the catalogs themselves, mm-hmm. um, because uh, I know we're all on a, a, a bit of a, a time uh, our time frame in which we have to get done, and we don't want to <laughs> keep anybody who needs to go, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, as I was saying before we started recording to, to, to Roy and George, uh, because of, you know, I, I, I get the physical catalog every, every month, uh, but yeah. this time, because of the timing, I had to actually use the digital version of the catalog. And I have to say, I really like that. Now, it, do you have any kind of direct um, uh, connection with the, the digital version of the catalog? Do you have any involvement with that? How does that all work in terms of what you do day to day? So a lot of my side is consumer engagement, but at the same time, uh, a lot of that also means uh, having a digital face for previews on top of everything else. Um, I have a great boss whose name is uh, Andy Mueller, and uh, he's been spearheading a lot of the digital initiatives. And um, and that includes um, uh, the just a digital download option of the catalog, a PDF version of the catalog, uh, updating the entire previousworld.com site because uh, we always joked that it was very web 2.0 for a very long time. And um, uh, also allowing people to browse the catalog through the website. So you can actually go to previousworld.com slash catalog and look at the entire catalog. And uh, soon, and I, I guess this isn't a big secret, but soon we're going to offer, give people the ability to pre-order through the website itself. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah I, yeah, I think that yeah. was announced some months ago, and I remember talking yeah. about that on, on the show and in, in, on in yeah. some of the, the news episodes that I've done. And, yeah. yeah, I've been very curious about that yeah. and, you know, what that all means and how, how that will change, uh, change the game, so to speak, uh, in, yeah. in the comic book business world. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing or hear, hearing and uh, reading more about that. So Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I can't say too much yeah, about I, it, I but, figured. <laughs> <laughs> but it is going to happen. Good, good. Well, I maybe maybe I'll uh, have to have you back on when once that's finally announced, and we can Absol- talk about that some more. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right, Troy. I have one. I have one question for you. Sure well, actually, it might, it might it might spearhead into two. But you're you're a digital guy. Uh, in terms of what um, I focus on, or. Well, I mean, you, that's your job. You're, you oh, have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're creating that online presence there for previews. Mm-hmm. And you're selling a hard copy product. And in today's world, h- how are you managing that changing demographic? I mean, me, I like print. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I love print. Mm-hmm. I, I, but I'm, I'm older. <laughs> no, no so, I think we're in the same boat. No. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, how are you guys 
try, if somebody can come to your site, fine. But if they're on the, on, on the web, they could also do some other things. And right, right, I'm right. wondering if a, you're, you're noticing changes and your, your changes in how you're trying to show people what's out there. And then B, how are, how does previews let people know what's in the back of the book? Like for instance, people who listen to our show, uh, I, it's Eric's show and I'm a guest to be honest with you. Uh, I shouldn't say our show, but when we do our preview shows. Eric has told me that he gets feedback that people appreciate that we dive deep into previews. And sometimes I wonder if the reason for that is they're, they're accessing the catalog online and because mm. they don't have an actual physical book in front of them, they're not turning to page 485. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To, um, to find some little publisher that has this hidden gem. How do, you, how do you guys put those hidden gems out there so people can find it? Um, I mean, that's actually part of my job. Like, I will be honest with you. Uh, we have, you use the term gem. We have our gems of the month. Sure. And those are actually, and like, but those are, you know, Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, IDW, like Boom Studios, like a lot of the heavy hitters. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, you get into these smaller companies. Like, currently, I'm a huge fan of Magnetic, uh, Magnetic Collection. Yeah. And they've just been bringing up a bunch of stuff from France and like like reprinting them in English. Um, mm-hmm. And so for me, it just kind of boils down to I'll talk about it on our weekly show, like, you know, or I'll I'll right. grab the cover and throw it up on Twitter because I, I have, you know, that's also part of my job. Sure. Um, and let people know like, hey, you know, throw it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. But like, hey, this actually looks really cool. I think uh, to use Magnetic Collection as, as an example, uh, there's a book that they do right now called Infinity 8. Um, which is has been um, uh, is, you know is, a, is a, being adapted from French into English, and uh, you know it's my pick every time it comes up on uh, comes out every, whenever the weeks it comes out. But also like I you know I've been doing like little uh, uh, Instagram posts where I, I try to compare it to something in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. So for example, like Infinity Eight is Fifth Element. Like for me, that's the the closest thing you could equate it to. Like you know, it's a it's a science fiction book. It's a little sexy. You know, it's definitely French. You know, mm-hmm. so like if you like Fifth Element, you will like this. Um, and so that's the that's the angle I take with these things is just try to pluck those little gems out in addition to our gems of the month. So that's great, cool, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, oh, and you mentioned Mag- Magnetic. Uh, I I enjoyed a book called Ghost World. A good ghost world, ghost of money. Oh yeah, buy. yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. We talked about that here on the show when I after I read that, that was fantastic. I can't mm-hmm. recommend that one more than. Did you yeah. check that one out? Oh yeah, no, I, I hopped on that pretty early. Like I, yeah, I love I, that. One. Oh. That was actually the one that introduced me to Magnetic Collection, where I was like, really? "Whoa, what is this?" I was like, "This sounds like Mission Impossible," and like mm-hmm. you know, like I was just like, yeah, it just and it's it's a great. I'm also a big action genre guy, so like if you give me anything involving espionage and high speed chases and like you know intrigue at every corner, I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, I love that book. That book was excellent. Cool, great. <laughs> all right, anything else, George? No, no, no. I think maybe as we're going through the book, maybe some questions will come up. So yeah, I have, I have, I have some right things too. Yeah. So yeah, let's 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 uh, dive in. Um, uh, last month, we ta- George and I talked about the the free comic book day uh, offerings. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, George, did you have didn't you have something uh, for Troy regarding the free comic book day stuff? Excuse me. Well, I was just wondering uh, what what is previews involvement with free comic book day i mean you guys have to be heavily involved in what what gets put out there so is there any sort of information you can give us about free comic book day even just to promote it to the listeners yeah i mean uh so we uh we have a little bit of a a church and state situation with with free comic book day and that's just (laughs) because and the reason and the reason is for is because it's a lot to deal with as somebody who like had a period where i had to kind of handle free comic book day in previous world before previous world kind of had uh, its own digital identity, I, sh- I should say. Um, uh, it was, it's a lot, <laughs> and uh, so we have a we have a, 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 a try. I always I always botch her actual title, but Ashton Greenwood is uh, responsible responsible for Free Comic Book Day, and she does a great job. We've had her on the show before, and she will kind of give us like you know the pitch about what's coming up. She's done a, a bunch of the uh, announcement videos for us, so if you haven't had a chance, definitely check out uh, the FreeComicBookDay dot com and the Free Comic Book Day YouTube, and you'll see Ashton. She'll give you a whole rundown of all that stuff. I can imagine um, it's almost like a separate division. 
yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There's just so even, much to, to do with it, right? Right. All, even it's though like, it's like mm-hmm. once Free Comic Book Day ends, the next day is like you're planning for the next one, like yeah. the Thanksgiving Day Parade, yes. the Macy's Thanksgiving yes. Day Parade, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And like it's yeah, so it's 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 a, it's a separate entity, but Ash and I sit right across from each other. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, since you brought that up, George, about the uh, having to plan it right after it ends, um, I work in in an industry where we have similar things. Uh, 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 my my official job is I you know I'm a manager, but I manage a group of people who work on uh, producing instruction manuals for my company's products. So, you know, I have, I have a, a bit of knowledge about publishing, but I, so I can only imagine mm. the, the, the challenges, uh, the, the, the timing, you know, just everything having to do with putting together uh, what is uh, approximately 500 pages, maybe 600 pages of material each mm. and every month. Yeah. And on top yeah. of that, having to deal with so many publishers and so many, you know, entities, you know, for lack of a better word, yeah. and getting everything, all that information in there. And then yeah. on top of that, doing the digital version and the website and yeah. the videos that you're doing and the outreach that you're performing. I, I just, it boggles my mind how much yeah. work would, you know, have to go into that. So um, there's just so many people, uh, sounds like that, are yeah. Yeah, helping yeah. to produce that at Previews World, so... Yeah, that's just, we have a just graphics amazing. team. Yeah, we have a graphics team that handles uh, the catalog every month, and then the catalog itself has an editor who uh, like oversees that entire thing. And then, like on top of that, uh, you know, we like we have free comic book day, which is can which the closer we get to it, does become all hands on deck. You know, mm-hmm. um, but then yeah, but then on top of that, yeah, we have previews world. Uh, we have comic shop locator, which is another thing that we're trying to refine. We have Halloween comic fest every year, and that's something that Ashton also takes care of. But again, the closer we get to it, it's all hands on deck. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it's always exciting. So, you know, anybody can can be critical of of any publication, um, mm-hmm. as some of some fans often are in in, in the industry. But mm-hmm. uh, say what you will, <laughs> Troy and his compatriots are putting out this 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 catalog each and every month. And boy, you know, yeah. my hats off to you guys for that. Yeah. No, thank and, you, thank you. And I'm guessing those solicits obviously have to come from each publisher. So mm-hmm. it's a matter of you guys have to go through them and make sure that somebody didn't put something fake in there, right? And make sure it's an actual solicit mm-hmm. for the uh, for the book and stuff like that. Yeah, that's uh, right. yeah, yeah. just thinking about mm-hmm. to do that for one publisher, much <laughs> less everybody yeah. in the book. Mm-hmm. Right. My co- my co-host uh, often likes to tell me that, like, oh, there's a typo in this solicitation. I'm like. You know, I it's there. There's like 600 pages of content. Like I like I I wish I wish like you know we could we could find these things every single time. But there are <clears> 3,094 <throat> items in the yes. current catalog. Yep. That if we decided to buy everything, it would be 89,631 dollars mm-hmm. and 11 cents. Yep. There's going to be a mistake in there somewhere. There's a oh, transposition. Yeah. There's yeah. there's going to be something. And then we do it all over again in the, in the next month. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Is there? Are you allowed uh, talking about separation of church and state here? Are you allowed to say anything you might be excited for on Free Comic Book Day? Have you had a chance to look at the list, or because it's work, you haven't even scrutinized what's coming out? Um, I I I did catch recently the press release for the uh, Spider Man Venom mm-hmm. uh, thing that uh, they're releasing, and actually, it's more. I'm I'm kind of a, a bit of a. a, a uh, creator follower, like I kind of tend to follow creators, and uh, if I remember correctly, it was like Donny Cates and a couple other people that I'm always I've always been a fan of. So I'm definitely on board with that. But uh, yeah, still need time to kind of like peruse the uh, all the free comic book day offerings. You know, Eric, if you remember last time you and I talked about some things we were excited about for free comic book day, mm-hmm. but I missed one. Do you mind if I just say it real quick? Go right ahead. Uh, so if it uh, like a to be continued, if anybody wants to hear uh, what we were excited about last uh, when we first saw the, the solicit, you can go back to last uh, the last show. But I did not notice that from Lion Forge again, uh, we were talking about Magnetic Press uh, mm-hmm. a little while ago from Lion Forge. There's a Sheets story. Mm-hmm. And I read Sheets, the graphic novel, mm-hmm. and I, I liked it. And I just figured it was a chapter. But now I'm realizing I'm thinking this is new material. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I, can you confirm that, Troy? 
Are you talking about, now are you talking about the free comic book day version of sheets? Yeah. And the only reason I say that is because the cover of sheets, the graphic novel had the sheet, the ghost in, in a dryer. And in this case, on the cover, the ghost is behind the sewing machine. Mm. Huh. And it's, it's making me think that perhaps it might be new material, but I, I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, but I, 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 now this is one I want to pick up when, yeah. I, when I get to my local comic shop. I think, I think that might be a new one. And, of course, this is probably a bit of a preview for a full, for a full book. Yeah. So but, I'm, I'm all down for that because I, I love that graphic novel. Yeah, an all-new original story that takes place after the events of Sheets by Brennan yep. Thumbler. Yep. There you go. Yep. There you go. And this is on, uh, for people following along uh, um, at home, this is on page 38 that, that uh, yes, George Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, to. it is. Yeah. So I don't know how I missed that last time. I think just because I thought it was reprint material, maybe introducing people to the story. But I love the fact that this is going to be brand new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, shout out to Lionforge. Yeah. <laughs> well, George does that, I think, uh, pretty much every month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, Troy, I forgot to uh, forgot to tell you this, but uh, generally, George and I we start at the beginning of the catalog uh, okay. with Image, and we go right through, and and uh, along the way we hit DC and Marvel, and then we hit the rest of the the catalog as well. So, yeah. we're just kind of in sequential order, so to speak, even though the okay. DC and Marvel catalogs are separate uh, from from the main book. Mm-hmm. Um, so, shall we dive into Image, gentlemen? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, since we're diving in, I, Troy, I want to give a compliment to previews. I know you probably have nothing to do with this, <laughs> but I, I, since you're here by proxy, I am if going it's, to If it's a compliment, I'll take the, yes. I'll take the compliment. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you guys have some features at the beginning of the book before people can dive into the solicits from the publishers. And one of the things, uh, two of the things I like, I like the in the edge that you guys have with the interview with the people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like the Twitter litter. I mean, you only pick six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six things, but I love them. They're great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are great. Yeah, there was a whole conversation about Twitter letter. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That should expand that. Instead yeah, six, actually, make it twelve or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a well, there's a story about that that I'll tell you about afterward. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Well, I, since we're on that topic, before we move on, um, uh, Troy, you mentioned something about you know. Uh, the reaction of people and, and, you know, maybe they don't know how to use the, the catalog and all that stuff, but, mm-hmm. but you, the, the previous catalog does contain at, at the beginning and the, in the front matter, how to use this catalog, how to order these yep. comics. So that's in there for people to see, but you know, I realize <laughs> if you're excited, you, you tend to, you flip through the, 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 the preface material, if you, uh, as it were to get to the good stuff, which is, you know, right, the right, publisher right. information. So I just want right, to right. remind people that, if if you're if you're new to comics and you're uh, you uh, know that this thing is called previews out there, you know they they walk you through it. They they hold your hand and and help you uh, learn how to order from the catalog. Uh, if if you're doing that, of course, just go to your local comic shop and tell them what you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, for things that you might have seen in the catalog or heard elsewhere, uh, perhaps yeah. on on Troy's previews World Weekly show, for example, yeah. Uh, yeah. or or here on Longbox Review. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Comic Shop Tales is a very fun thing, and I'm guessing on the on the website there are extra extra episodes, so to speak, of uh, yeah. comic, comic Shop Tales. I think it's this. I, if I remember correctly, it's the same one in the catalog goes up uh, like uh, that same like I think the same week. Uh-huh. Um, so it's I, so there, it's pretty much all the Comic Shop Tales are the same ones on the website, but there's an archive of it. Oh, I so. see. okay, great, mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, good okay. stuff, man. Oh, and uh, would you like to give a shout out to your co-host? You, you haven't mentioned. Yeah, her yeah, name. I haven't mentioned her name. Yeah, uh, Thea yeah. Curley. Uh, okay. I, I mentioned her, and I, I mentioned that she didn't like. Uh, she she complained about solicits. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, shout out to Thea Curley. She is my co-host, and uh, we we do that show every week. We get up and uh, you know put on a put on a happy face and inject ourselves with coffee, and you know talk about comics in the world of geekdom, and, and you know. There's nothing to complain about. It's great mm. stuff. You guys do a good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to start off with image and then gentlemen jump in, uh, with your recommendations. Uh, okay. George and I did talk about this last time because it was pre pre solicited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 this is a sender, which is a sequel to uh descender, um, mm-hmm. from, uh, 
where there it is, the page, uh, Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. So this is Ascender number one. Uh, so for fan, I, I didn't read Descender, but man, have I heard how good of a comic it is. And yeah. boy, does, you know, this, this cover for uh, issue number one just looks gorgeous. And the, the preview art that that's shown as well. I just mm-hmm. think it looks really cool. Yeah. All the, the watercolors and like yeah. everything like, yeah, like this is apparently, so I, so, uh, Jeff Lemire and, uh, Dustin wins like Ascender is, uh, about basically it's a sci-fi comic and it deals with like, you know, robots and whatnot. And I guess they're jumping ahead a couple of years and telling, a uh, uh, flashing forward and telling the story of like some of the aftermath of Descender. So yeah, it's very interesting. I'm very curious. And the cool thing is you get a timeline of events inside the catalog this month. So I was going to point that out because I love, it's one of those things I love about comics. You know, you give me a timeline. I, I, it's like the old yeah. history of the DC universe. Oh uh, yeah, the, hey. that came out after Crisis. At the bottom mm-hmm. of the pages, they had had they had that timeline kind of stuff. I love mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So when mm-hmm. I saw that, I'm like, "Ooh, this is this is perfect for me." <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. no, I love it. I love I love when they add they do additional stuff to help uh, branch out the story. And there's a nice preview inside too. Actually, it's like four pages. It looks mm-hmm. like so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I I love that uh, the publishers do that. Um, I don't know how much is it is it does preview just kind of take in what the publishers want to do so the publishers already know they want to highlight certain books and so they give you preview mm-hmm. art for that and, and yeah. you guys reproduce it there or yeah. or is it uh do you know is it is a matter of, of previews going to the publishers and saying hey we've got we've got you know x number of pages do you want mm-hmm. to you know fill that with with uh spotlighted material or whatever yeah, yeah, like I, it's a little bit of both. So, like, yeah, the publisher will have a certain amount of pages, and there are things that they want to highlight. Um, usually, the the things that uh, have already been considered for gems of the month. Uh, and yeah, they'll they'll do interviews, they'll do timelines. But yeah, it's uh it's always a, a evolving thing, uh, week to week, and before the catalog comes out. So, see, that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, I, I'm just amazed you guys can get the catalog out every month uh, as you right. do because, man, I, like I said, in my job, we we deal with with last minute changes all the time, right up to the point of publication. And it can be challenging. So yeah. I, I commiserate no. with you. <laughs> no, shout out to Marty Grosser. He's been doing the catalog for years and like, he's, he's just got it down to a science and it's amazing. He needs to change that picture though. Uh, once a year at the beginning yeah. of the book, I right, think right. at least it's, once it's a year he needs to change that picture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, by the way, if anybody, you know, I, just to let you know, and if anybody at previews listens that Wednesday at the end of the month is like my favorite day of the month. Mm-hmm. Oh, when the new catalog when it's comes previews in? day? Yeah. When it's previews day, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Something to look forward to, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 12 times a year, man. 12 times a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, on page 50, uh, uh, I, I want to point this out. This is the little girl's original graphic novel from Nicholas. All off. Ah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And Sarah Delaney <laughs> and Ashley Lanny. Uh, mm-hmm. I I thought this was interesting. I want to point this out because it's set in Ethiopia. It's not mm-hmm. not a setting you normally see in in comic books. So mm-hmm. uh, you get you get this uh, you get this. Uh, what does it say here? A a brain e- a legendary brain eating monster straight out of folklore set in Ethiopia. So I thought that was really cool. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, it's actually the second cover is actually really great too. I don't think it's featured in here, but it's on the website. It looks it looks great. Mm. And and again, uh, here we have a creator spotlight for this book. Now, again, that's that's an image decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they provide that to you guys and they say, okay, this yeah. is something we want to spotlight. We want to take two pages for this, or however many. And one mm-hmm. of those pages, we want an interview with the creators. Something yep. like. That. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neat. Uh, next, I have here. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's going to seem like I'm going to spotlight everything from, from image here, but uh, Fair Lady on page 56 by mm-hmm. Brian Shermer, Claudia Balboni, and Marissa Louise. Uh, I, it's, a, it's a science fiction story, um, but it, uh, it intrigues me because it's, it's, uh, the premise is, you know, this is the story after mm-hmm. uh, this, this, this event. I think it, maybe it's a war. Yeah, it, it, it's what comes next af, you know, after, after a big war. Um, but then in the solicitation, it says something about here. Um, so it's, oh, the main character is a private investigator. Um, I just, you know, I, I kind of like those kind of stories. Uh, they also, in the solicitation, 
they talk about it's a procedural case, uh, a new series with a procedural case solving of Magnum PI <laughs> and fables. So right, yeah. Uh, set, but set in a, a, a rat queens like high fantasy world. Mm-hmm. Anytime you can put in something, uh, something having to do with Magnum PI or some comparison right. to Magnum PI, <laughs> yeah. I am going to pay attention. That's a that's an amazing call <laughs> callback. Like, uh, yeah, that's actually surprising. Also, it's kind of interesting because it sounds a little bit like Mulan, like mm. a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, because the main character pretends to be a pretends to be a, a man to get into the army. Uh, so yeah, this is a very interesting mishmash of things. I'm very is. curious about this. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. How how will this mishmash work? I'm I'm very curious how mm-hmm. how this is going to be. So yeah, but yeah, like I said. Magna P.I., that would that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, art, artists Claudia Balboni and Marissa Louise made a very interesting artistic choice by giving her the Magna mustache. <laughs> I, I, th- I think that that was a very bold choice on their yeah. part. Yeah. Man, I was I with you was... for a second there, too. You had me going. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I, I respect that, actually. I love it. <laughs> uh, and then following that is is uh, Section Zero. It's a new miniseries returning concept yeah. from Carl Kessel and Tom Grummet. I do either. Did either of you read Section Zero back in the day? This I know I, this is an uh, an old property, but they're bringing it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I did not. But like, actually, it's funny because I grew up uh, on Carl Kessel and Tom mm-hmm. Grummet's a lot of their work. Uh, yeah. They did Superboy. Uh, and which was one of the uh, one of the early super what is was one of the Superman books I gravitated to when I like in the nineties. Um, so yeah, this is actually really cool, and I've always loved 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 Tom Grommet and Carl Kessel's artwork. So no, they're a great team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I'm, I'm curious about what this book was. Yeah, in mm-hmm. the preview art, there's there is a picture of I guess the main character wearing sunglasses, and I'm yeah. sorry, but I get a flashback to the 90s. Right, yeah. Super yeah. Playbook. yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Right. It's funny you mention that because uh, the, the, the Reign of Superman movie, Super, Reign of the Superman, yeah, I think that's what the mm-hmm. official title uh-huh. is, the Reign of the Superman movie, the next D, uh, DC uh, animation movie just came out recently, and mm-hmm. uh, I've, been, I've been watching that a little bit. I haven't finished it, but uh, oh. it's been interesting to revisit that you know, because I read I read the comics, uh, many of the comics back then when they did that storyline. Uh, oh yeah. But but to revisit it through the the lens of the the animated movies, yeah, um, that's always uh, it's it's an interesting uh, situation, I guess. Uh, you know, yeah. coming back to it in a different form like that. So right. And here we have a kind of a callback to it, I guess. So at least through the creators, so that's interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. Like yeah, I'm, like this is an interesting duo. Like I actually want to pick this up just to mm-hmm. to to find out what they're up to now. Um, I mean, should I just jump in here with yeah. uh, things that I'm eyeballing? Okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, sorry, I wasn't quite sure what the pace was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, not to get too far ahead of myself, uh, but one of the books that I've been reading uh, religiously and I've absolutely been like loving is the Magic Order. And uh, I've been suggesting to people quite a few times that uh, that they need to pick it up. And the trade paperback is actually coming out, which is great because uh, there's been a bit of a lull <laughs> in between issues. But uh, I uh, I'm glad that like you know people will have an opportunity to read this back to back because it's been addictive. So I'm all for that. Yeah, that's that's a that's a comic I've been eyeing. I've actually been waiting for the trade uh, in this case uh, because mm-hmm. I, I like to read Mark Miller's work collected uh, mm-hmm. it yep. seems to work better just you know just uh, that's just a personal taste of mine but yeah this mm-hmm. this concept just is right up my alley mm-hmm. uh, it, in fact it gives me a uh, a bit of a super crooks if, if people read that by mark miller yeah mm-hmm. it's kind of got that kind of vibe to it which and i really enjoyed super crooks so something like this but but set in a, a, a magical world yeah that, that's definitely something i, I want to read right and, and it's 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 it has like some very dark elements that are, but still manages it to be fun, which yeah. is which is interesting. So yeah, he uh, Miller does a good job at at uh, threading that needle, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, with, you know, with the various artists that he he works with, and this well, this one's done by uh, Olivier Corpel, I believe that's mm-hmm. how you say it. So yeah, yeah that that I, that's definitely one on my list to get uh, this month. Yeah, and the artwork's phenomenal. Like if you're not familiar, Corpel did House of M. 
And like I've always been a fan of his work. Like his artwork's just great. And that's uh, page sixty-eight for anybody following along. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, uh, I'm I'm gonna jump back just real quick to page sixty because I want to mm-hmm. highlight uh, one of my favorite books of last year, or maybe the last couple years. Uh, mm-hmm. Black Monday mm-hmm. Murders returns mm-hmm. finally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I knew Jeff you'd Hickman be all over this one. Or John John Hickman is back. Yeah. Uh, but this is there. There uh, it says here every issue will be double sized now, so you get sixty four pages uh, for basically five dollars. That's uh, pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. I don't care how many pages it is or how much it costs. I'm. A, I, I love that series. It's so weird and fun and interesting. So. Yeah. No, Hickman's Hick, Hickman's a fan favorite for sure, and mm-hmm. like I actually been meaning to meet, read some more to come back to some of his indie stuff. I remember reading a. Uh, Oh God! What was that? There was a book he did called News Something or Other, like right before he came over to Marvel. And I remember just like reading it and being like floored by it, which made me a fan of his for a very long time. I can't. I'm, I'm blanking on the title of it. I'll, I'll look it up. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have it on my shelf, just uh, off to my right here, but uh, I haven't read it. It's it's uh, one of the the many books by Hickman that I mm-hmm. have acquired that eventually I will get to them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because I don't want to read it; it's because you know I've got so many other things to read. There's a lot of comics out there, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, another one like that that I've been eyeing, uh, that I've been waiting for a trade is is uh, Sam Humphreys and Jen Bartel's Blackbird. So they mm-hmm. have the the first volume of that coming out, and Jen Bartel is one of those artists where it's like she her art is her coloring is so distinctive yeah, and yeah. beautiful and interesting that that I, I definitely want to pick up this book. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, like uh, I, I think I, I uh, incorrectly said that this was her first uh, interior art book, but uh, like she's definitely um, very much a part of the process on Blackbird and it shows. Like, yeah, this is actually the book just looks beautiful. The covers look great. I love them. Yeah, yeah, the coloring, like I said, is it's just yeah. so different from anything else that I see in comics for the most part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I have to give a small shout out to uh, Ian Boothby and Giselle Legacy. I can never. I'm not quite sure if I'm saying her name right. Um, she has the book Exorcisters, which is actually one of Thea's favorites. She picks it every single time it comes out week to week. So, <laughs> little little nod to Thea on that one. Yeah, that's when that that's another when that comes good out. Book. It's on the top of my to read pile. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mine too. Mm-hmm. Such an interesting concept. It is. Surprised nobody came up with it before. Yeah. And since we're on pages 64 and 65, and you talked about Jonathan Hickman, I guess we should say that. The penultimate trade for East of West, oh, uh, yeah. Volume Nine, is coming out, which mm-hmm. means that eventually, when Volume Ten comes out, maybe I can go get all the books and finally read it. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I'm in the same boat. I have and a lot of friends it, who right? love that yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like I was, I have a lot of friends who love that book, and like it's one of those like I just said, you know what? I'm going to wait until it's all done and I'll read the whole thing. Yeah. So because that's another book that looks great. Mm-hmm. I read the first volume. I'll admit. It was way over my head. And then, of course, when the <laughs> second one came out, I didn't remember what happened in the first or understand right. it. So right, I think right, I'm right. just going to need to do it all at once. Yeah, some books are like that, I feel. So yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Um, also, like, uh, you know, I know a lot of people, speaking of, we were talking about Jeff Lemire earlier. Uh, I think a lot of people are definitely fans of Gideon Falls. And that's mm. been a very popular book. Mm. And uh, Volume 2 is, hit, is coming to trade paperback. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Are you checking that one out? Uh, that's when I need to read Volume One. That's another one mm-hmm. Thea has actually put me onto because she's a fan ah. of that book, and I need to read Volume One because I'm behind. I have not read the first issue yet. So, yeah, that's that's a book that's on my. I need to check this out at some point. Mm-hmm. List. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like so many others. Right, that ever growing list of I need to check this out at some yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, also, a natural volume two, which I know is another popular book. That was the breakout book of Image last year. I kind of feel, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's uh, it's another one that actually comes from France. And, oh, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, it's a it's an adaptation that uh, that has come over here, and like people people love that series, and I can understand why because like if you've ever seen the interior art, it's amazing. So. Well, all I'm all I've seen right now is so they they have the, the cover by uh, Mirka and Dolfo, mm-hmm. so yeah, that that's distinctive as well. Yeah, kind yeah, of she does the interiors. Of, kind of reminds me of uh, Jim Bartell in, in a in a sense. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, 
And then on the following page, 72, I just want to point this out. So you just we just talked about oh, you know, nice. things to add to the I need to check this out list. Uh, yeah. Stray Bullets is something that I have heard, you know, by uh, David Lapham. I've heard for years how good Stray Bullets is, mm-hmm. and I've mm-hmm. not read it yet. And and mm-hmm. it's nice here that, that Image has put in this um, uh, listing of, of, of all the volumes of Stray Bullets. So, you know, get that in front of people's eyes and and um, maybe uh, int- get people like me to finally pick <laughs> pick up a copy <laughs> and start reading this uh, this series. Like I said, that uh, I've heard is really really good. Yeah, I've I've actually become very much a big fan of David Lapham. Like his crime stuff is fantastic. Mm-hmm. He's also done some actually, uh, I, I'll say f- fairly random stuff. And uh, like he's done like uh, some video game related books and a couple of other things too. But his Stray Bullets I read when I was working at a comic shop, and it's actually a really great read. Like it kind of, it starts off like an anthology and like it just kind of branches out from there and it's just fantastic. Now, is it? Uh, do you know? Uh, do you remember? Is it? Is it a? Is it a black and white comic or is it colored? It's black and white. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, it seems like that would be uh, that that would be the the format that would fit that kind of storytelling. All right. But uh, yeah, you know, just because they do they do talk about it here in this this page as prime noir excellence. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> which it actually is. Yeah, so it's, yeah. yeah, that's not an oversell. That's the truth. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Troy, do you have anything else from uh, Image you'd like to highlight? Because I I think I'm done with Image now. Um, yeah, I can just uh, make some passing comments about some of the other stuff uh, out this month. Okay. Uh, definitely uh, another popular one is Scotty Young's Middle West. Um, our editor of the show, Johnny Johnny Rose, he loves that one. Um, and it's kind of it's definitely like a fantasy book that uh, comes from Scotty Young. If you're familiar with uh, uh, as any of his uh, Wizard of Oz stuff from Marvel, yeah. um, he's definitely another fan favorite. He also did a book called I Hate Fairyland, which mm-hmm. people love. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Murder Falcon, which I actually stumbled upon a few months back, and I absolutely love. And it's just about a. Uh, a uh, falcon from a from another world that comes down and like he's he needs the power of metal to fuel him. So that's actually a really fun book. Is it, is this like and, a uh, so it does it have something to do with with uh, rock and roll? Yeah. Is, mm-hmm. is there a music vibe to this book? There's definitely a music okay. vibe to it, and okay. like uh, and like yeah, it, it wears it wears this love for heavy metal on its sleeve, and I absolutely love that about it. <laughs> yeah, I know some people in in uh, in my family that might really enjoy a comic that. Ties into heavy metal, so I'll, oh, yeah. I'll have to let them know about that. Um, outside of that, like uh, Sharky the Bounty Hunter number one hasn't come out yet, but I'm actually looking very much forward to that. That's Mark Miller, and that's Simone, Simone Bianchi. And uh, Simone Bianchi's artwork is just he's, – he's one of those guys, like I see his stuff and I'm like, I don't know how he draws like this. Yeah. And like does it on, like, on a regular basis. <laughs> like it's just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like it's like perfect. Um, but it's also Mark Miller. And so you can expect something a little bit crazy. Yeah. And with Simone Bianchi on there, I'm, I want to see I want to see Simone Bianchi draw crazy Mark Miller stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah I think yeah, Mark Miller definitely has has uh, he's gotten that reputation of of doing you know really interesting, sometimes crazy, sometimes out there ideas. Yeah. And he seems yeah. to draw in some of the best artists to to execute those ideas. So yeah, I like yeah. that about him. His his work yeah. is. As I've said before uh, on previous shows, he, he's kind of hit or miss with me in terms mm-hmm. of the stories he's telling. But when he mm-hmm. when he hits me, it hits me hard. So it's good. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Now I, I understand exactly what you mean. Like uh, his, his magic order is great, you know, um, but he's also just kind of a machine. He just cranks out books. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, that, exactly that. He just it's mm-hmm. he puts out so much stuff. That yeah. you 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 start you know this is the cynic in me you start to wonder is it really any good and mm-hmm. and the answer for me sometimes is yes and sometimes not so much. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's just some highlights from the image comic section. But uh, yeah, I mean we can move forward if you want. I'm all for it. Georgia, do you have any other image uh, titles you want to highlight? Well, not any titles in particular, but I. I do like to call out the non-comic paraphernalia, and they actually have some apparel at the end mm-hmm. of the yeah, they do. image section. And I happen – I mean there's there's something that uh, – there's an image from Descender. We were talking about Ascender. Mm-hmm. There's an image from Descender uh, on a T-shirt, mm-hmm. and there's also some, uh, some Saga T-shirts. And yeah. I happen to like the Prince Robot T-shirt. Yeah, that's a cool one. <laughs> I, think, I think that, <laughs> that, that one's good. pretty neat. Yeah. 
It's mm. almost like they're playing with the image logo with that too. The way that yeah, it's... you know, yeah, yeah. and of course, being an audio audio medium, it's hard to convey yeah. what's going on. But that's why we want everybody to go check out the previous catalog. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's definitely, and I always have to remind people, there's there's all sorts of merch in here. It's not just oh, comics, right? You know, like, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of cool apparel. A lot of times, some of the stuff I wear on the show, a lot of stuff I wear on the show comes from the catalog. So, uh, I was at my local comic shop this week, and uh, Rich, the guy behind the counter at mm-hmm. Comic Logic, uh, I don't have my bell, Eric. Every time I mention Comic Logic, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> I, I, I guess we don't need to say that now that we're in February, but uh, he was ordering a Cowboy Bebop statue for somebody. So mm-hmm. you, you never know what you're going to find in previews. Right. Actually, I I think I ordered the same thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> also, I got to point out, like just before we uh, move, I know we uh, said let's go ahead and move on from Image, but the, Todd McFarlane's doing Game of Thrones action figures, which is actually pretty. Uh, yeah. It's very cool because McFarlane does his stuff is very detailed, and like you're going to get the characters looking like the characters, which is awesome. So definitely look for look for that at your local comic shop. Yeah, that that dragon. I I love dragons, just generally mm-hmm. speaking. So yeah, that dragon uh, uh, action figure just looks really cool. That looks awesome. I I telework now, but back when I had an office, I had uh, rather than use the cabinetry above my desk for what it should have been used for, like manuals and folders with with accounts in it, I had all sorts of paraphernalia. And mm-hmm. one of the pieces of paraphernalia was a McFarlane figure. Mm. I don't know what the character was called. It was somebody from Spawn. Mm-hmm. It was a woman with eight, uh, uh, six arms with a lot huh. of we- with a lot of weaponry. Mm-hmm. My God, the, uh, the only reason I bought it was because of the detail, and of course, it was yeah. on clearance at, at the then Fantastic Place Toys R Us. But yeah. it, what you you were the, the detail? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have a lot of his sports uh, paraphernalia yeah. that, that he mm-hmm. does. You know, when, when when something comes out, whether it be football, basketball, now we have some baseball in, yeah. in this catalog. You know, spring training will, uh, will be on. Uh, this comes out in April for opening day, so it's perfect. Mm. Uh, if it's my team, I, I take a look at it. I'm going to admit, yeah. yeah. No, no, he's got he's got the corner market, and like he's been doing a great job. I've never even read Spawn, but I, I've owned Spawn action figures, Spawn mm-hmm. action figures. So <laughs> beautiful. So well, I've read Spawn, but like it's not my cup of tea. But <laughs> I've, I've, yeah. I like I have have owned more than more than a few spawn action figures. So, you know what I'm going to do if I find a picture because when I left my job, I did take a picture of how everything was lined up. Mm-hmm. If I can find a picture, I'll put I'll post a picture of that McFarlane figure that I used to have on my on my desk when oh, when awesome. you when you release this, Eric. So it'll accompany. We'll have a visual okay <laughs> visual component awesome. uh, Twitter or something. Troy, is is that something that you you continue to 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 purchase uh, or, or action figures or statues or anything like that? Uh, you know, it's funny, like I stopped when I stopped working at the comic shop and now that I'm working here again, like I'm like pretty much just decorating my desk with <laughs> like toys all the time. It's like impossible not to. I have what I call sort of like the action shrine, like above my desk. <laughs> and it's like it's characters like Ripley and like the Terminator. <laughs> oh, that, you, you all must do that, though. Does every, everybody must do that in the office. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like yeah. actually one of the things I keep kicking myself for not doing is, uh, we did this once, but uh-huh. I think there was like a thing called like a uh, office decoration day or something like that where people just, you know, different office took pictures of their, their office decorations. And I did it one year and I keep saying I need to do it again because uh-huh. like our, 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 our office spaces are amazing. <laughs> now see, you know, it would be a novel at your office not to have anything at all. Have it. Yeah, I know. Small, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, that, yeah. That would be the one that stands out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about those people. We don't like those people. Yeah, no, no, those people. <laughs> well, you know, some people are lucky they could, they could do that at their office. I that's not yeah. something that I could get away with at my work. <laughs> right? Are you, yeah, kidding? Yeah. you can't put that kind of stuff on your desk no, at your office. No. Do they even? Please tell me they don't frown at least a picture of your wife or something on your desk. They allow that. You can you can do family photos as long as there's not you know, it's not uh, out of hand, I guess. <laughs> what, what kind of handmaid's tale world do you work in? <laughs> right. What kind of dystopia are you exhibiting? <laughs> <you working? laughs> uh, well, let's move on from that now, shall we? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, so let's. Uh, hey, Troy, are you hiring? Eric's willing yeah, to right. work, uh, move across country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd be closer to you, George. There you go. That's right. Actually, I'm in Troy's backyard, so actually, I should be asking for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. 
All right. So uh, let's uh, let's move on to Dark Horse if if you guys don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's see here. I, I want to point out uh, first, and you guys just jump right in uh, as well. Uh, she could fly. This is because uh, I I heard that she could fly was this. It seemed to be a, a pretty uh, popular book uh, from Dark Horse, and so we get uh, it's a it's a sequel or I guess a prequel in this case. But uh, she could fly the Lost Pilot, and it's a five issue miniseries. Uh, for fans of that book. Yeah, no, this is another one that like, it's, I think this is part of the Burger Books line. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I was really fortunate enough to actually interview Karen Burger and she was Ooh, talking wow. about the, all the different books that were coming. I actually had a, last year I got to inter- I got to interview Axel Lonzo, Karen Burger, and um, Shelley Bond, which I feel is like some 90s vertigo, like bingo. It's <laughs> a trifecta uh, right there. So this was on the right. video show or, or uh, was for some other content? Uh, we were we, like, we went to New York Comic Con and we just pulled in a bunch of uh, different creators. And I, I low key, they told me I had to interview certain people, but I low key also made a wish list for myself. <laughs> nice. And I actually got to talk to those people, which was really awesome. So, yeah, I believe the Karen Berger interview is it's not on the show, but it's like it's available individually. So, yeah. And uh, Axel Alonzo uh, answered some, pretty much helped me wrap up a, blank, a Black Panther piece that I did. Uh, which was a was was a written uh, uh, expo, well, more like a an overview of the history of the character, and uh, the Shelley Bond one hasn't uh, seen the light of day yet. Actually, we need to make that happen. Yeah, so, so we're going to look out for that. Yeah, yeah please. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to check out all all those uh, interviews if if, if those are available. So yeah. But yeah, um, she could fly. Like the Karen, the Burger Books, uh, the Burger Books line is doing a lot of really cool stuff. They just released a book uh, by J.M. D. D. Mateus, mm-hmm. uh, which is the Girl in the Bay. Um, mm-hmm. They of course had stuff by Anthony Bourdain. Um, they've got stuff by G. Willow Wilson. Uh, yeah, just you know, this is a uh, this is kind of like the 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 next generation of vertigo right here like you mm-hmm. know a nice mix of like just really seasoned writers uh doing like really cool high concept stuff so and this is by christopher cantwell and martin morazzo mm-hmm. nice yeah, and the concept, if I remember correctly, is like this: uh, this main character saw a woman who did fly, and it's become sort of like her obsession. Uh, and this book is actually picking up uh, uh, sometime after the first series, because this is a this is sort of like a relaunch for that series, uh, where she's been committed, and because her obsession has kind of gotten out of hand, and now that she's being uh, allowed to like uh, continue on with a no- her normal life. Uh, she's picking back up on her obsession. So, you know, to find this woman who can fly. We've all been there. We know the deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my next book from Dark Horse that I want to uh, spotlight here is on page 120. Uh, City of Others. It's a 10th anniversary edition hardcover. This is uh, something from that uh, from Stephen Niles. More importantly, Bernie Wrightson uh, yeah. doing the art with uh, Jose... Uh, Villa Rubia. Uh, I I remember this book being on the shelves, you know, mm. ten years ago, but uh, it's not something that I that I picked up and read. But uh, you know, you put Bernie Wrightson on on uh, on there, it definitely has me uh, intrigued at least at the very least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. I mean, it's the the fact that Bernie Wrightson's one of those guys. It's like you know, he produced so much stuff that like yeah, we're still going to be seeing stuff even though he's not with us anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really cool. I'm also very curious about uh, Afro Hustle. I didn't, I didn't want to jump. Well, jump back, I guess. No, but like, uh, yeah, this this looks like a fun one. It looks like they're doing like a Flash Gordon thing uh, about this uh, this these two brothers. One's like a space like overlord, I guess, and the other one's like a pirate. And uh, issue one was solicited last month, but they have issue two in here, and I'm keeping an eye on that because that seems like something right up my alley. We did talk about that last month. Yeah, we did. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Yeah. Looking forward to that too. Yeah. yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. And you know something, you know, a lot of people on on shows that spotlight previews, Troy, probably gloss over ongoing series because mm-hmm. it's one of those things. If something's great all the time, you forget about it. It becomes just a little mm-hmm. ubiquitous, I guess. But I, mm-hmm. I'd like to spotlight Black Hammer in mm-hmm. in, uh, in previews. <laughs> Man. On page 107. You and everybody else, George. Well, I don't right, want right. people to, you know, this, must, <laughs> this might be the best superhero book out there, but it, mm. you have Black Hammer 45 from the world mm. of Black Hammer, number two, and you have Black Hammer Age of Doom, the main title, number 10, coming out. So don't sleep on those uh, on page 107. 
Mm-hmm. And if I may make, make a recommendation that I've been probably been recommending on past preview shows, there is the trade paperback compilation of Mystery Science Theater 3000 The Comic. Uh, uh-huh. Now I've been talking about it here, and if you guys have been holding out, you might want to check out the trade that's solicited on page 112. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, actually, I just want to point out for people. I remember when this, this was initially announced; the uh, single issues were announced. I was like, "How does that work?" Because like Mystery Science mm. Theater, like they watch B movies and like comment on them. But the cool thing is they're taking public domain comics and like taking the, and doing the same spin, which I always I thought was love, pretty fascinating. I, 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 Eric, I've been talking about it almost every episode where it's in, in previous. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. In fact, yeah, that's uh, an interesting. Uh, one. Yeah. This is last, awesome. last episode, George uh, described Troy what you just described about the comic because I had the same question. Question yeah, about right. it. it's like wh- how how could they do this? And then once you describe that to me, I'm like, oh yeah, this is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually Damien perfect. Shot. Yeah, D- Damien was on from uh, 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 Sleepy Reader six 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 was on. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he had asked too. So uh, yeah, definitely, guys, if you want to check it out, uh, I, I think you'll enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else from Dark Horse, gentlemen? Um. Was there anything anything you had, George? Uh, no, I'm 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 good till IDW. Okay. Oh, well, um, I guess we don't go straight to IDW. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, DC's next. I, I did want to point out. Uh, I forgot to mention this at the top. Uh, it is Black History Month in February, mm-hmm. and uh, previews is uh, uh, showing uh, throughout the catalog uh, various publishers. Uh, back catalog and new stuff uh, that are that that uh, goes along with that theme, and so I wanted to point out on page 125 that Dark Horse has um, has about what uh, a couple dozen books yeah. listed here for Black History Month or relist mm-hmm. books that they have. Yeah, and no, and there are publishers that do the same thing. Right, no, and there's some really good ones. Some uh, there's actually a, a Burger Books title, I think called Negro, and a couple other ones that are actually really excellent. So definitely check those out. Um, uh, you know, actually, I do want to point out Bad Luck Chuck, which is another one I oh, solicited yeah. last month. Um, mm-hmm. Again, it's, I haven't we haven't had a chance to read it because it hasn't been released yet. But uh, this this concept of like a person whose luck is so notorious that she kind of starts to rent it out to people, so that like you know, if you want to get a if you want to uh, some insurance fraud for your home or something like that, you just have her show up and the house will burn down. I just thought that was really interesting, like yeah. and how how it turns on her. So that's another book that people should keep an eye out for. Yeah, that that's a book that I'm I'm looking forward to when they uh, come out with a trade. I definitely want to get that. Mm-hmm. And uh, for people who you know like to listen to the, the, the comic book creators talk about their work, I just listened to an episode of Creator Talks uh, where. Chris uh, on his show talked to the writer of of that book, and oh, nice. it was really really cool, really interesting what she had to say and how she came up with the idea and a bunch of other topics that they talked about. So check that out. Yeah, I was very happy that she didn't let everybody know that it's really my biography, but she changed my name and the gender <laughs> to protect the innocent. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. based on the true story. <laughs> yeah, the side gig. That I the used to have. There mm-hmm. you go. All right. So uh, this is where we will switch over to the DC previews catalog. Mm-hmm. And uh, Troy, just so you know, I, I'm I'm a big DC fan from long ago, so I tend mm-hmm. to uh, highlight a lot of things from DC Comics. Not a problem. Uh, generally speaking, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I, I I did try to cut down stuff, but you know, there's some there's some <laughs> good stuff coming from DC. Yeah. Now let's do it. Like. Yeah. Does uh does having does Marvel and and DC having their own separate print version of their of previews affect you in any way on the digital side when it comes to putting their solicits on the website? Um, no, because uh, fortunately, like all that stuff is available on the website. Okay. So, like, yeah, even if you go to pre- if you go to previewsworld dot com slash catalog, you'll see Marvel stuff, DC stuff, image stuff, like everything. Well, no, so I meant I meant your bottom. job. Does it complicate your job because it's a separate print? I mean, the fact that oh, okay. they're separate print items doesn't complicate your part of what you do for the website, right? No, no, it doesn't. Okay. So, yeah, like our whole thing is like, you know, just get them to the comic shops. <laughs> so right. okay. It just yeah. keeps it keeps it very simple for me. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure I'm sure it caused some uh it caused a little pause in uh on the catalog print side, but for me it's it's all gravy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, I'll start off here with on page four of the DC book. Uh, this is from DC Vertigo. It's mm. the uh, uh, hardcover graphic novel, uh, Six Days, The Incredible True Story of D-Day's Lost Chapter by Robert. It's mm-hmm. written by Robert Venditti, who's one of my favorite writers, uh, mm-hmm. along with Kevin Marr, uh, with Andrea Moody. Uh, Moody, I think art. Moody. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is, so this is um, uh, in commemoration of the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, so if, if people, you know, cause war comics used to be a really big thing. Um, yeah. DC even published, uh, Sergeant rock comics well into the early eighties, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, so now we get what's, you know, it's based on, uh, true events. So I, I'm really curious about that, that, uh, that story. And, you know, like I said, Robert Venditti is pretty high in my book. So if, if he's mm-hmm. involved with this, I definitely want to, uh, take a look at it. And if I remember correctly, this is actually based off of a family member's true life story. I believe you're correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying right. to read. I'm skimming it to try to uh, to tell, but I believe you're right about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It says here uh, at the bottom, uh, Robert Venditti, whose uncle fought in the Battle of, I can't say that word, oh. <laughs> Gran- Gran- Granges? Gran- I don't know. Okay. Uh, I can't, I can't no. do French. Not a history. Not a history buff. Can't speak French. <laughs> oh, I, I, I apologize to anybody who speaks French. French. <laughs> but I tell you, that solicit sold me. So I don't know if Robert Venditti wrote that solicit or his editor wrote it. I don't know who did it, but the solicit sold me. Yeah, that's um, a good one. You know, it, it, you, you skipped over the uh, Teen Titans thing, Eric. So mm-hmm. I just want to bring it up since it was on the cover of DC previews. And while I'll admit I'm not reading Teen Titans or Deathstroke right now, I feel I'm missing out by not reading Teen Titans because I am a fan of Adam Glass. Yeah. And even on Deathstroke, you have Christopher Priest, but I, I mean, I'm a real big fan of Adam Glass after his, uh, rough riders run mm-hmm. at, 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 uh, aftershock aftershock. Yeah. And he's doing lollipop kids with his son. I'm, I'm liking that one. And he's going to have a new one that we're going to talk about as yes. when we get to aftershock. Uh, <laughs> I so I feel you like would. I'm missing out. Yeah. So I, I think last, last month we talked about the trade for his, the collection of the first volume of his work. Uh, was solicited last month i believe and i may jump on just to catch up and see what's been going on especially with the new characters he developed Mm -hmm. but here you have solicited this month the beginning of the terminus agenda with uh, teen titans and deathstroke crossing over so i just wanted to bring that up Mm -hmm. yeah it's cool yeah no it's christopher priest too which is pretty cool i'm all for that yeah and i've actually heard nothing but good things about both of these books Mm -hmm. i mean both those writers Mm-hmm. Yeah, both those writers, so. yeah, you can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Do we want to move forward? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm going to jump ahead to page 18 uh, just to highlight Detective Comics 1001. So last month, of course, was Detective Comics 1000. George and I talked about mm-hmm. that along with uh, yeah. with Damien. But I, I'm very pleased to see that Peter Tomasi is still writing that book. Uh, yeah, he, he uh, mm-hmm. his his story in Detective Comics recently here in the nine nineties uh, that I've been reading uh, has just been really really good, really mm-hmm. really strong stuff. So I, I appreciate that. I recently um I like like a fool I kind of slept on Peter Tomasi, and uh, I recently read Super Sons for the first time. And I absolutely loved it. <laughs> so now I'm kind of like, I need to read more Peter Tomasi. So yeah, I'm, and when I found out he was doing Batman, I was like, man, I, the last time I read, well, I'm reading Batman Damned right now, but the last time I read Detective had been a while. So mm-hmm. I'm actually all for this too. Like, yeah, I've, I've become a fan. Yeah. You, you, Troy, you mentioned earlier how you, you follow creators mm-hmm. through, through the various books. And, and Tomasi is one of those that I follow pretty much through mm-hmm. everything that he does. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. He's good. You should, you should definitely te- check out his uh, his earlier works. Mm-hmm. And it's just really cool to see, you know, uh, Action Comics has been doing this now for several months, but, you know, Detective Comics now, uh, or, or I guess will be when it's published, <laughs> yeah. four digits, Next you month. know, four oh, digits yeah. of, of a comic. I love, I just, I don't know, I just love that. The, the, the old so comic bad. nerd in me just loves the idea that we have a couple books that are in the 1,000 issues yeah. now. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I like it's funny to me because like I always kind of see different websites calling it like you know it's the first superhero comic to like break a thousand or something like that. I was like, but let's also be honest here. Like 
that's a major milestone for comics, period. <laughs> like, right. you know, yeah. not just superhero comics. Like, <laughs> you know, I've, I always find that distinction a little funny and a little odd. Like, it's just like, that's a big deal for just comics as a whole. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And you, you guys mentioned Peter J. Tomasi. Mm-hmm. He's writing the Adventures of the Super Sons maxi series. Right, yeah. Uh, number nine solicited on page eight. And, you know, I'm not reading Superman or action. Mm-hmm. And, but but I I realize they've they've we're, we now have almost like a teenage or a preteen Superboy. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, whereas here he's his I don't know what, what was he supposed to be about ten or something when he was teaming up with Damien. So mm-hmm. uh, I I don't know if they jumped the jump jumped ahead too soon on that though because uh, I I think this was hitting a chord having the two of them. Being the new world's finest, almost right. now that he's older, it seems like there there was some story potential that was lost in doing that so soon after he was introduced. I was a little surprised. Like I'm, I'm playing catch up on this. I was a little surprised by that myself. But yeah. like, I've also haven't read the stories where like yeah, that so change happened. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it has more to do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally it's totally conjecture on my part, but I think it has a lot to do with what's going on with Bendis and the Wonder Comics line. Because uh, we have the Connor, right? It Connor Kent Super Bowl Connor returning, Kent. and mm-hmm. so you know, how does that all work out now that we have you know two Super Boys? <laughs> right, yeah. it all gets confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Um, hey, yeah Troy, also, how, how do these how do these variant covers affect you guys? They don't affect you in any way, do they? I mean, it's just another thing that you've got to get to the to the vendors out there, right? I mean, yeah. Is there anything more to it than that, or no? <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, the publishers really do dictate that and like, you know, the, um, in terms of like, you know, the different incentives and like, uh, the different ratios that things can be ordered. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we really are just kind of like funneling, you know, we're, we're, we're the bridge from, from, from them to the comic shops at, at that point. Um, uh, every now and then we do like certain con exclusives that are exclusive to us, but mm-hmm. that's, but that's, that's about it. I mean, this Mark Brooks one here for, uh. Detective Comics 1002 on page 19. I love it. I like Mark Brooks. I like Mark Brooks. I actually have an art book by him. Like, yeah, he's a, he's definitely definitely a favorite. He has an art book. Um, I kind of stumbled. Convention thing? I think it was a convention thing. Yeah, I oh, kind of okay. stumbled upon it. Yeah. Nice. But, yeah. Love his work. I also just want to point out, uh, uh, if we're just hopping around, like um, Grant Morrison, Grant Morrison, and Liam Sharp's uh, Green Lantern is still continuing, mm-hmm. and. Are you I, I was I'm behind on it. I enjoyed the first the first two issues, mm-hmm. and uh, I actually need to go back to my shop and pick up the rest of them. But I am Graham Morrison's one of those creators that I just follow. Like you know, like Graham Morrison goes, I go. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, you know, and Liam Sharp. Uh, Liam Sharp's a guy actually like I I used to love uh, in the late '90s, and he disappeared for a while, mm-hmm. and then he came back and he did that Brave and the Bold book, which was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really big on, uh, seeing where this goes, especially since we're taking like a police procedural kind of angle with it, which mm-hmm. I think is exactly what I wanted from Green Lantern. So, and Morrison has a tendency to tap into the very quintessential elements, you know, yeah. of a certain character. So I know not everybody's crazy about Liam Sharp's artwork, but it kind of works for me. I thought you know, what he did in that, especially in that first issue was just mm-hmm. gorgeous. Yeah. Some gorgeous uh, pages in that book. There are so many naysayers out there. So, yeah. so, 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 says the guy who poo poos on a lot of things on a yeah, previous episode, but right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, hey, listen, you got to know your own kind, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. There hey, you go. Hey, Eric, you know, you were talking about how Robert Venditti is one of your favorites right now. Mm-hmm. And I see Damage number 16 is coming to an end, and he wrote that. And you did all your previews about the new age of DC heroes. Had you stuck with damage? I don't. I don't even no, think I asked you that. No, oh, I, you I, I just got the first few issues, and that it was, uh, you know, it was it was fine. But I, I decided not to continue continue yeah. with that. Okay, one. well, if anybody is interested, the last issue is solicited on page twenty. So doesn't that mean that we only have one book out of that New Age of Heroes continuing, which is the Terrifics? Is that right? I believe. I've heard, you. What what else was there? <laughs> I've, I've heard conflicting. I've heard conflicting things because I remember. 
someone telling me that the silencer was done. And I actually really enjoyed the silencer. Um, and But I keep seeing it solicited. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, you're right. That's, 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 you're right. right. that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it just um, took a, a, a bit of a break, but it is, it's coming back. I don't know. But actually, yeah, I definitely want to point out that yeah, Silencer number sixteen is in here. And uh, uh, if you if you are a Grant Morrison fan, I actually just want to point out that this story is specifically is a story that I don't know a lot of people realize. It's springboarding off of Batman Incorporated, uh, mm-hmm. which was the the big heavy in Batman Incorporated, which Grant Morrison did was Leviathan, which was mm-hmm. run by Talia, Talia Al Ghul. Mm-hmm. And so this is about actually Leviathan. And really? like Tal- really? Talia's affiliation, yeah. And one of the, in particular, a particular assassin in Leviathan who's trying to get out. So it's definitely like a John Wick type of thing that they're doing, but it's a lot of fun. Cool. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See that 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 book is one of the New Age of Heroes books that I actually did not pick up when it first came out. So now that you've described it like that, now I regret it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a fun book. I really enjoyed it. And I was really, I picked it up just out of curiosity. And then like, I found, I was like, oh, this is, this is from Batman Incorporated. Like, I totally dig this. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, beyond that, uh, I'm also definitely checking out, uh, I actually read Naomi number one last week or oh, two please, weeks ago. Tell us. tell us about it. And I didn't like, I didn't know what to think of it. Like, cause like the solicitations were very vague. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I finally sat down and read it, and it was, you know, the only word I can kind of think of is like it's endearing. Like mm. it's 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 interesting because I tend to like stuff that like uh, like world building stuff, and this is a thing that's like it's in the DC universe, and this particular character is kind of just a girl who happens to encounter a major fight between Superman and not Maggog. I always say Maggog. Is it Mon- Mongol? Mongol. Mongol. Yeah. I think it's- Uncle, yeah, yeah. Um, and it happens in her small town, which I think is kind of like Seattle or Portland, um, or a small town in Seattle. Um, and uh, the entire town's a buzz, but she keeps missing it. Like, she keeps missing, like, she missed the fight. Like, she missed, like, Superman coming back to help clean up the city. And, like, there's another mystery that's building from that. Like, why is she the only one who's seeing this? She's not, who's not seeing this. Mm. So, mm. it's got my attention. And also, Jamal Campbell, I don't know where he came from, but his artwork is amazing. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it, it's something that I didn't expect to like. And then, like, when it came out, I was like, huh, that was kind of interesting. So, mm. something to keep an eye on. No, that's a, that's a Brian Michael Bendis written book, correct? Yeah, it's a, from the uh, Wonder Comics yeah. line. It's Brian okay. Bendis and David F. Walker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, you, the the artist that you you just mentioned that that's one of the the things that I I, I definitely was um, or glommed onto when I saw that solicitation for Naomi. Um, but I have to I have to admit the the description of it, like you said, it was kind of vague and I don't know. It just, yeah. it didn't, it didn't, they didn't do their job well enough to, to, to make me want to, to get it. But <laughs> because it is Brian Michael Bendis and he's like, like Venditti, he's one of my favorite writers. Yeah. I will eventually check it out. Um, just like, and I'm going to skip ahead, uh, several pages here, but, um, mm. but it's a good segue. Uh, they've got the, the first trades for cover, uh, by mm. Bendis and David Mack, who's a, a phenomenal yeah. artist. And Pearl, Volume One, as well, with mm-hmm. uh, art by Michael Gatos, also excellent artist. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm definitely going to be getting those. Mm-hmm. Now I'm reading cover, and I'm going to admit that I don't Uh-oh. really know don't, that don't, much. Don't tell me, George. I'm not, no, I'm not saying anything. I, I don't know that much about <laughs> creators that much. Like mm-hmm. I don't know what they all look like. Uh, I don't delve too much into their social media or anything like that. But I was listening, Eric, I'm sorry, I strayed and I listened to another comic related podcast and they talked about <laughs> okay. cover and they mentioned who they felt without a shadow of a doubt was being depicted as the, as the main character and the main antagonist mm-hmm. and they are creators and they didn't go mm-hmm. into why they felt that, well, I mean, they're pretty sure it's not that they felt, I, I pretty, the way they spoke about it was a guarantee that the antagonist was this guy. I'm not going to say it because it could be wrong and I don't know anything, but they never really said why they felt like, for instance, do they, is this some sort of meta thing where there's, there's some sort of friction between the two people in real life that Mm -hmm. he felt that he had to write it in the book in this particular Uh, way, or are they really good friends? And they said, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if, if I did this? 
I think I'd be more interested in that story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The behind the scenes. So, yeah. So I, I really would. I don't know if that, that trade's going to be annotated in any way. I doubt it, especially if there is some sort of animosity out there. But I would really like that kind of behind the scenes story. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Not about that book. Yeah. You know, actually, uh, this is not in the catalog, but like uh, Howard Chaykin did a book called Hey Kids Comics. Mm-hmm. Yes. And mm-hmm. it. And it and it seems to be like really just about a like a, it's you know the names and faces have been changed to protect the innocent, but it seems very much about like comic creators and like mm-hmm. you know some of the underhanded things that have happened throughout the decades, which I I instantly found very fascinating. And like it's one of those books where I, as I was reading, I was like, who is he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's like so inside, and there are so many yeah. there are so many podcasts even that break everything down and talk to people. But it is so inside that I wouldn't even think those people couldn't possibly know who who was everybody being depicted in that that shaken. Right, 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 yeah. right. I just found that so interesting, and like, yeah, I actually need to finish that one because I was, I I just want to crack the code on that book and figure out like <laughs> is this is he talking about Steve Ditko here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, now you make me want to read that book. Yeah, it was a fun one. It was a fun one. Um, I also want to point out uh, just my own personal uh, fandom, I guess. Uh, the Wildstorm is still going. It took a brief hiatus, and now it's back. Uh, as someone who The Authority was one of the books that got me back into comics during the, like after like I kind of dropped out in the, in the late 90s, right. um, I'm really happy to see Jenny Sparks or, or this incarnation of Jenny Sparks and Midnighter and uh, Apollo and The Doctor, et cetera, et cetera. I'm really excited to see where this is going. And this is just the prelude to whatever comes next. And I'm also a big Warren Ellis fan. So Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the book is, is still going, it's still going strong and it's just great, weird sci-fi espionage, like craziness. So like a great book. What was it about the nineties that people of all different age groups seem to drop out and then something brought us back in. Mm -hmm. We all have that kind of a story and it all seemed to happen sometime in the nineties. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I saw um, – I was I was reading something or watching something, I forget what it was, and someone said that the 90s does get a bad rep. It does because, like, you know, from that era, we got Vertigo. Like, you know, uh, Image Comics did a lot of things for, like, you know, in, like for creator independence, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of glum on to, like, you know, the shoulder pads and the variant co- – and the, the chrome covers and all the other stuff. But the 90s aren't mm-hmm. awful. But no. as somebody who was, like, a Spider-Man fan, who still is a Spider-Man fan, you know, you tell me that Peter Parker's not Spider-Man it kind of you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, was, it was just it was like that was like almost like the camel that you know like the, uh-huh. the straw that broke the camel's back you know so it was like addition to a bunch of other stuff but the, the authority brought me back so I'm all for cool. it well, nice. and, and the artist John Davis Hunt is is oh. just spectacular his work is just amazing yeah actually and, and it's like there's a there's a functional aspect to it that I'm always impressed by like he's He's uh, his style is kind of abbreviated, but it's very to the point. It's very expressive, and also like some of the the there's a lot of mechanisms in this book, you know, like if that makes sense. Like there's a lot of technology in this book, mm-hmm. and the way he depicts it is like always interesting to me too. You know, I'm going to go back to the Naomi solicit really quick, <laughs> and for anybody sleeping on it, and Eric, you know, you said that you would probably get a trade of it or something. I just want to point out on page 39, the solicit for number four does mention hop on board a look at the DC multiverse you never knew existed and the new mysteries and threats it brings to our world. Now, you're a multiverse guy, Eric. Yeah, boy. So, those, are, those are key you know, words that just make me want to. Yeah, there's an book. algorithm in, in your mind right, <laughs> yeah, right? there. That, they, they've that tapped into me. That. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick up issue two because I want to see where it's going. Like the first issue doesn't give you a lot. But what, it was enough to get teas? my gears turning. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And as we're going forward in the book, I just want to go back real quick to Justice League 21 and 22 on pages 34 and 35. Not only does number 21 complete that sixth dimension story that Eric, you and I talked about last month and uh, Damien talked about, but number 22, yeah, okay, everybody, here it is. The DCU will never be the same again. Dunk, dunk, dunk. So. <laughs> That's Justice League number 22. Yeah. Also, I want to point out, I am a sucker for anything 
Jay Lee, and like there's a a very small image of the variant cover by Jay Lee, and I'm like, oh, can please just make that a poster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he his work is very distinctive. It yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love Jay Lee. Um, yeah, I don't know. Was there anything else you guys wanted to point out? I have. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Morrison and, and Sharp's Green Lantern uh, book earlier. There's a couple trades uh, uh, that are in this uh, previews, DC previews, uh, that I want to point out in case people miss the hardcover version of Green Lantern Earth One, Volume mm-hmm. One by Gabriel Hardman, Karina Bechko uh, uh, doing the work on that. So you get that you, you can get the trade uh, version of that if you like. And I know a lot of people really, really enjoyed that book. Um, I, I did get the hardcover myself and I enjoyed it, um, as well, but there are a lot of people out there that I, that I was kind of surprised at the, 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 the number of positive reactions to that book. So mm. people want to check that out. And then below this, is this is on one of those other lists, Troy, that we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. This is on my, uh, well-known comic runs that I've never read. <laughs> mm. So you got the Green Lantern, Green Arrow, hard traveling heroes, it's a new mm-hmm. edition trade paperback collecting that uh, often referred to and well-loved story uh, from the 1970s. Um, yeah. I, I think I've read maybe Green Lantern uh, issue 76, and that's it. So I haven't read the rest of that story. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I got to get this. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's Danny O'Neill and uh, it's Danny O'Neill's Neil Adams and Dick Giordano. Like, yeah. this is classic stuff. Yeah. Like, I. It's got that great that great bit where uh, uh, the where the uh, the elderly black man is telling uh, uh, Green Lantern, "You worry about the blue man and the yellow man, but what about the black man?" Right. <laughs> like it's just a great like 1970s comic moment. I love mm-hmm. that stuff. I also want to point out um, there's an absolute art of Adam Hughes, which is another artist I'm a sucker for, and it's 75 bucks. But if it's if it's an absolute, I'll probably I'll probably dive on into that. Yeah, those boy, I, th- th- those kind of books, I I would love to get, um, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, because of the price, I generally shy away from those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I but I, I'm I'm looking forward to a tome of just Alex. I'm sorry, Alex Ross. I'm about to say Alex Ross. I have Alex Ross too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Adam Hughes. Adam Hughes. Uh, Adam Hughes artwork. Like I'm all. I'm just a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. I also just want to maybe point out for a second, like there's a really cool um, DC collectible. Uh, to, from Dark Knight's Metal is uh, based on the artwork of Greg, Greg Capullo, the Murder Machine statue, and it looks like some. I didn't read Dark Knight's Metal, but it looks like some crazy Tron version of Batman. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out real quick. I didn't want to jump too far ahead. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, since, since we're talking about that, I, I I had this on my list uh, a few pages before that on seventy six. It's the Bat Family Nightwing multi part statue. And so mm-hmm. you get you can or uh, I guess pre-order the Nightwing version, which of course, uh, as as most people who listen to the show know, I'm a huge Dick Grayson Nightwing fan. So this this definitely is something that intrigues me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the price, however, uh, may, may prevent <laughs> me from getting it. But but uh, you, at the bottom of the page, you see you see uh, how this Nightwing figure fits in with the the multi-part aspect of this statue with Batman, Batgirl. Damian Wayne Robin and um, the Red Hood. So I th- that, it looks pretty cool. Uh, that yeah. image. No, it's a nice collection. Like that's actually really cool. All right. Any, anything else from DC? Um, I mean, like I'm at this point, I'm like, I'm like gaping at the uh, some of the toys in the back. Like, there's an amazing Mark Mark Sylvester statue. That's it's eighty bucks. Wow. Yeah. Batman Black surprised. and White looks like it's almost like a Game of Thrones type of thing, right? Yeah, so I can't believe that's. I can't believe that's just eighty dollars. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I just have a couple of, as they say, floppies mm-hmm. that I want to call out real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on page forty-three, it is the last issue of Scooby Apocalypse. Can you believe it lasted thirty-six issues? Wow. Yeah. That's another book. That's another book that I've been meaning to read because, like, I like Keith Giffen, I like Jan Demetrius, mm-hmm. um, and the idea of a kind of pseudo serious Scooby Doo book about the zombie apocalypse is very intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how, out of all those Hanna Barbera launches, even with the popularity of the Flintstones, 
mm-hmm. that the only one that really lasted was this one. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah uh, I, I keep saying I'm going to go back and read those because uh, I actually stumbled upon an issue, like a random issue, where it was like uh, Daphne was about to blow her brain, <laughs> brains out. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> like she she just kind of reached a point where she just didn't think she could take it anymore. She was about right. to like shoot herself in the head, and I was like. What is this? <laughs> you know, that that might be a surprise hit omnibus if it ever comes out. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I, and I think they, they used to have backup. I, I haven't read an issue, but I believe that there are uh, have, there have always been backup stories. Mm-hmm. And for the past couple of issues, it's been Adam Ant going through some sort of trials to join the Justice League. Oh, uh-huh. so, See, so that would be a kind of a cool thing to read. I want right? to read that. Yeah, I would read that. <laughs> Adam Ant was it. always one of my favorites from from yeah. uh, from my youth. Mm hmm. Uh, on page 45, the second issue of Second Coming, uh, written by Mark Russell with art by Richard Pace. I've heard that this has caused a little bit of a tizzy on social media. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So I haven't read anything, you know, I haven't seen the posts, but I can imagine what they are. Yeah. Uh, now, well, I mean, social. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I was just going to say, I don't even think the first issue has even come out yet. No. So. Yeah, right. It's a bit, no. Yeah. You're right. I think people need to maybe wait and see before they judge too harshly, <laughs> exactly. but I'll just, I'll just stop there. <laughs> now, now another, another issue 36, that's a final issue is Titans 36. Now, I, you know, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but wasn't Titans when it first came out, it was right after rebirth and it was supposed to be the title to read in addition to the flash that was supposed to give us some sort of a hint as to what was going on. And yeah. here we are three years later, it's like they've abandoned the rebirth idea. We're in a new Bendis era. Like it's, it's going in a totally different direction. Mm-hmm. doomsday clock seems so peripheral right now where that was yeah. supposed to be the end all be all. Uh, it's, um, and, and it's almost even like what Tom King's doing with Batman has strayed so much from whatever rebirth was originally supposed to be that, that it's almost like they put it on hold because that's also popular. Let's not even re- visit rebirth until Tom King's done. Bendis mm-hmm. has done what he's going to do. And <laughs> so it's almost like Titans was just like left in the wind. <laughs> so I, yeah. I don't know if anybody's been reading it, but I'd be very curious to see what the heck was going on with that. Huh. That's another I don't, thing I'd like I don't to know the behind much. the scenes. I know, yeah. <laughs> but but isn't that something you'd like to know the behind the scenes of? There seem to have been some sort of decisions in editorial yeah. that have guided all the stories that I think we should have read that right. we may never read. Right. I, I yeah. think I think uh, you know, especially DC and Marvel, that you know, they they're they're just trying to find the things that that yeah. resonate with the fans and if if something over here, even though they started something uh, going down one path, they'll 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 uh, they'll discover something that's resonating, and they'll just they'll just pursue that. Yeah, you know yeah. they're just trying to tell uh, as you know good stories that that we fans will buy. So you know they'll they'll stay in business. Yeah, uh, we, we we know only mature people are listening to this show, but I'm, I won't go into details. But let's just say Wonder Woman number sixty nine has to deal with lust. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Actually, it does. Everybody's making out on the cover. Interesting. <laughs> Only you, George. Only you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what sets us apart from the others. There you go. Uh, before we move on from DC, I, I do want to point out a few more trades. Um, uh, maybe it's just the uh, nostalgia uh, aspect of it, but Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got uh, Shazam hardcover collecting the 1970 series. Another thing that I've not read, but I've always been really curious about. So you get uh, you get uh, for 50 bucks you get uh, uh, was it Shazam uh, one through 18? I think that's when they brought that character uh, back after a long mm-hmm. hiatus. Um, this is after DC acquired the properties. Uh, the property. Right. So I've always been curious about that, and I've always wanted to read more Captain Marvel. Uh, material. So there, there's that. And then a couple pages before, I should have started with this, but oh well. Um, page 68. If you're a fan of Michael Golden's art, mm. uh, they have a collection of his, his Batman work from mm. various issues. Um, and I, I'm, I, I, I happen to like Michael Golden. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's oh, all excellent. I have, gentlemen, for cool. DC. Anything else? Uh, tons of cool stuff, right? but yeah, yeah. like uh, can continue exploring. All right. So next we have uh, IDW. Nice. 
which starts off with uh, with uh, the image from the the new Star Trek miniseries or Star Trek series, uh, which I believe is also the main cover of this month's previews. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah. So the, so yeah. The cool thing about this, actually, I should have pointed this out earlier. Uh, the covers for uh, this month's previews are uh, War of the Realms, uh, which is actually, I guess, issue one was solicited last month. But this is like Marvel's focusing on the series as a whole, so they're soliciting for issue two. They're highlighting issue two on the cover and Star Trek Year Five. And as someone who's, I'm not a hardcore Trek fan, but um, as I am fascinated by the idea that this, that the TV show was three seasons. The cartoon, I guess, technically would be the fourth season, mm-hmm. and now IDW is making this the official fifth season. Right. So I just, I actually find that kind of cool. So yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so you you just you said everything I was going to say about the book. Oh, but, sorry. <laughs> but no, 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 it's fine. Because I am I am a, a huge Star Trek fan, and so mm-hmm. uh, and 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 IDW's Star Trek uh, books that they've been putting out in the last several years, uh, mostly starting with uh, the 2009 Star Trek movie. You know, uh, bringing those characters and the, that that version of Star Trek into comics has mm-hmm. just been fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. Quality stuff from the beginning to the end, and uh, so I, yeah, I'm I'm very much looking forward to reading what happened during um, year five of the uh, the five year mission. Uh, mm-hmm. It is curious though, uh, IDW. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, Ten years ago, actually, they came out with a mini series called Star Trek Missions End, which was the final mission of the five year. Uh, mission of that's of, right of yeah the enterprise that's right. so mm-hmm. i'm curious if if they'll ever touch on that particular work here in this year five book hmm. that's interesting so, um, yeah i also want to point out that the uh star trek the q conflict is uh is uh, continuing because the first issue just dropped this past month, and that's a major crossover. Pretty much every, I feel like it's everybody's favorite captains. Yeah, like I joked on the show that like the only one not in this mix is Scott Bakula. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. So, <laughs> so oh, yeah, it even very cool. it even says here in the solicitation all the captains face off for the first time, but they don't mm-hmm. they don't mention Enterprise. <laughs> Mm-mm. Scott Bakula's character, so Scott Bakula got caught, caught the uh, short end of the stick. Yeah, no, no kidding. Yeah, that is that is a book I I actually am waiting for the trade. I'll I'll be getting that definitely when it comes out. Cool. There was the big Ghostbusters announcement over the past week or two mm-hmm. that had the internet a buzz, and IDW is celebrating Ghostbusters' 35th anniversary with a bunch of one shots. And I will have to admit, I did like the 2016 movie. That rebooted everything with mm-hmm. a female cast that everybody poo poos on, but I, I have no problem with that movie. Mm-hmm. And they feature every, almost like every combination of Ghostbusters in these one shots here. So it looks like it could be a lot of fun for Ghostbusters fans. Yeah, no, I, it's funny you mentioned that. I, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to cut you go off. Go ahead. No, good. No, it's funny you mention that because uh, because of the uh, announcement of the Jason Reitman movie, mm-hmm. um, I realized that I had I'd forgotten about the 2016 film and just decided, oh. like, you know, let me go ahead and, you know, I still have a Netflix DVD queue, so I pushed it up to the top of my queue, and I actually watched it uh, over the weekend, and it wasn't bad. Like, yeah. it was decent, you know? I like, it, it's, yeah. Yeah, nothing's going to replace the original 1984 movie. Like that's that's just that's just those are just big shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't bad, and I think one of the things I like about what IGW has done here is now they're doing a 35th anniversary, and they have a collection of books that really are just highlighting all the Ghostbusters. Exactly. And so you get the 2016 series, um, you get the real Ghostbusters the animated series, right. you have the original movie version, and you have the Extreme Ghostbusters, which I think people forget about, but I do want to point out the 2016 group is not the first group to have a female Ghostbuster. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> like Janine's been a Ghostbuster, and there's actually a character on that show that was a Ghostbuster as well. So, yeah. yeah. And, so definitely the, the celebratory. Yeah. Uh, the one with the uh, the cast from the 2016 movie is written by Devin Grayson. Mm, nice. Yeah. And the one with the extreme Ghostbusters is written by Jim Beard and Keith Dallas. And Keith Dallas, if it's the same Keith Dallas I'm thinking of. He wrote the book for Tomorrow's, the oral history of the implosion of the DC universe. Huh. Oh, okay. So if that's the same Keith Dallas I'm thinking of. So that's interesting. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And I didn't realize Devin Grayson was doing that. Actually, that's a name uh, who kind of disappeared for a while and is like yeah. it's been popping up again. So that's cool. Yeah, that's good. And we had talked about that last month too, right? We did, didn't yeah. she <laughs> start a book or, or a collection of a miniseries she had done? I th- yes, I was believe that's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard to remember a month from a month ago, George. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That was that was like six hundred pages ago, that's guys. Right. <laughs> that's right. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to jump far ahead, I think. Uh, page 161, uh, Dick Tracy was a cartoon mm. character from my youth that I, you know, I would watch stuff, uh, but I never really got into the character. But boy, uh, given that Michael Avon Emming is, uh, is doing this book, uh, Dick Tracy right. Forever, I, wow. Uh, yeah. And it looks like he's taking, you know, on the cover that they're showing here, uh, Dick Tracy's flicking his his trademark yellow hat at us mm-hmm. away from him. You know, kind of like maybe he's he's uh, uh, pushing away that that old, I don't know, uh, w- w- what would you call that uh, that style that he had, right. that hmm. uh, that retro cool style of Dick Tracy. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, I think we're going to get more of a hard boiled detective version of Dick Tracy with, with, uh, with Oming doing, doing the, the work here. Yeah. No, I'm very curious about it because, because it's Michael Avon Oming and like, you know, my, my, my fond memories of Dick Tracy are actually the Warren Beatty movie. Uh-huh. Actually, I really, I used to love the Warren Beatty movie, but uh-huh. like, uh, um, that's about the extent of my familiarity with him, but Michael Avon Oming, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't read the first miniseries that the all reds did that one right mm-hmm. the, the yeah. first one so i didn't mm-hmm. read it I'd li- i'll probably get it in a trade form at some point or in a back issue bin and this sparks my interest also mm-hmm. i also want to point out there's a culmination uh for the teenage mutant ninja turtle series it's about to come up it's called city at war mm. and kevin eastman is actually very much attached to this which i find kind of interesting uh because i feel like he's been kind of uh he hasn't been writing these books, these particular group of books. Um, I also want to point out that Matea Santaluco uh, is doing a book called TMNT Shredder in Hell. And I guess they're releasing a director's cut of it. And I got a chance to interview him uh, and got to see some of his artwork with, like, you know, just kind of stripped down, like, just like the pencils. It's impressive. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, I, like, I have not read issue one yet, but the actual artwork for that book is amazing. So definitely something to check out. I'm not familiar with uh, that that artist's work. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff. Like he's kind of been like I think the breakout star for breakout artist for the Ninja Turtles line at IDW. And uh, yeah, I mean Shredder and Hell like as a concept is exact was exactly what it says. Like Oroku Saki died, and now he's in the underworld. I guess fighting for his life. So very interesting for his afterlife, I should say. Yeah. I've got some things from Black Crown. We were talking about Shelley Bond before. Mm-hmm. Uh, new Black Crown book called Eve Stranger. You have unlimited funds, a jet set lifestyle, and extraordinary abilities, and your bloodstream is filled with nanobombs. <laughs> and of course, hilarity ensues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had That's noted by that David one as Barnett. well, George. Yeah, David Barnett and Philip Bond. And David Barnett, I may say, writes a book that I'm happy is back called Punk's Not Dead. Mm. Punk's not dead. London calling number three is solicited on page one sixty five. Mm. Mm. I was a fan of the original, and uh, I'll be purchasing uh, Punk's Not Dead. London calling. Yes, yeah, it's really interesting. Like this is another one. Like I mean, we talked about like the the Vertigo, the Vertigo editors finding uh, various homes at different publishers, and like Shelley Bond's Black Crown is another one of those. And like she's definitely taking a kind of a a punk rock attitude towards it, which I think is what she bought the Vertigo. Uh, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I had a chance to read Lodger, and that was actually uh, we talked about David Lapham earlier, but that was mm-hmm. actually a really cool book. Okay. And uh, yeah, and uh, now the trade's available as well. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a deep cut here for IDW because on page 166 and 167 there are two graphic novels that look very interesting to me. One is called Box Book One by Patrick Werbelet and you Hyde Heid- Schroeder. Uh, Matthew likes to build things and invent things, and he finds a box in front of his house one day, but it is a living toolbox. Even better, Box loves to invent things, too, so they become fast friends. 
But where did Box come from? And how did he get to be so magical? When his secret comes out and accidentally leaves Matthew's parents frozen, the two friends will have to race to find the answers and save the day. For $9.99, you get, oh, I don't know how many pages it is, but it sounds like a pretty interesting young reader's graphic novel. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the opposite page, you have Penny Nichols by M.K. Reed and Greg Means with art by Matt Weigel. Uh, Penny gets roped into helping out for an amateur slasher film. And it turns out that, uh, again, uh, more hijinks and hilarity ensues. And it is an original graphic novel that is a loving tribute to the chaos and camaraderie of DIY filmmaking. Hmm. And the ways we find our future and our family in the unlikeliest of places. And there's just a little hint of some uh, sample pages at the bottom. And I don't know. Things like this are, are the things that get my attention more nowadays. Mm-hmm. Than some yep. of the superhero stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, spe- and speaking of that, uh, there's a couple books in here that I, I noted because I thought that perhaps my 13 year old granddaughter uh, might be interested in them. She, she, she's a uh, so Troy knows uh, she's she's just getting into comics. She she's very interested in art, and uh, so I'm always looking for books that she might enjoy reading. And uh, on 168 is is one of these. It's it's book two of the Surfside Girls. Uh, I don't I don't know how I missed book one, but um, but the, the the solicitation definitely caught my eye. Uh, it seems like something that she she really might enjoy. And and the best part is that stuff like this that I think that she'll enjoy, and I order for her, and she reads. I get to read too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, get, I get exposed to, you know, different kinds of stories, different kinds of, of uh, creators work. Uh, and this, so this is by Kim uh, Dwinnell. Oh. And then a few pages before that is um, Four Sisters. This is oddly uh, also a second book. This is volume two, Four Sisters, volume two, Hortense by Katie Bauer, Malika uh, for Uke, I think. Oh. Um, uh, mostly, you know, it's, the the preview pages just look really cool. I it looks looks like it's watercolor, but I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, but uh, it uh, based on the description here, um, it, uh, it sounds like something that she uh, that Madison might enjoy. So yeah, cool. About it's, it looks like it's it's about a young girl who's trying to fi- basically figure out what she wants to do with her life, and and you know, cause, uh, yeah, she's 11 years old. That's right. So yeah. Anyway. Anything else from IDW, gentlemen? Um, no, I think I'm uh, good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so mm-hmm. Marvel would be next. Okay. And Troy, you mentioned earlier that uh, the War of the Realms cover is is one of the mm-hmm. covers of the previews catalog, and so uh, George and I talked about War of the Realms last time as well because I'm a yeah. huge, again, I'm a, a Jason Aaron fan. Uh, so, you know, I follow follow certain creators like like you do. And so uh, this whole story, this War of the Realms, has been building up for years uh, in the, Th- the Mighty Thor and now the Thor book that's, that's out. Yeah. And Russell mm-hmm. Dodderman is just a fantastic <sighs> artist. Yeah. And you combine that with Matthew Wilson, who I will say is, I think, the greatest, one of the greatest color artists in comics uh, today. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be, regardless of what the story is about, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful comic book. Yeah, and you have to, like, I mean, truthfully, if you're dealing with anything involving, like, the Nine Realms or Idrisil or, you know, the colorful world of uh, Asgard, like, you got to have some great colors. And, like, these, these every every image I've seen from War of the Realms is just eye-popping. Yeah. yeah also, I, I just, I'm a sucker for Art Adams anything, so. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> cover image is beautiful. <laughs> I thought it was Art Adams actually on the front of the catalog this month, but that's, um... Uh, I think it's Nick Bradshaw, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I thought it was Art Adams, too, but it's Nick Bradshaw. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Which, yeah, who's also become a, a quick, uh, uh, a, I've also become a fan of. So. Now, now, you talk about content, though. Okay, so first of all, what are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. There, there are 12, 12 or so titles coming out in April related to War of the Realms. Mm-hmm. The tie-ins and, in the miniseries? Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I think people should know, especially if they only look at the digital version of previews, that the content for Marvel 
the Marvel previews book compared to the DC previews, mm-hmm. there's 50 per, 50% more pages yeah, in the Marvel a, yeah. previews book. It, it's noticeably thicker. In mm-hmm. fact, it, it almost rivals the previews catalog itself. But Marvel <laughs> is going to have a lot on the shelves. <laughs> They're going to flood the shelves in April. I mean, it's, it's noticeable. You can notice mm-hmm. it right here in, in, in mm-hmm. just these two books. Yeah. And also, the previews are just yeah are out of control in this thing. Like, I mean, they just jump off the page. Like, yeah, Russell Dodderman, Nick Bradshaw, uh, Art Adams. Like, this is just absolute eye candy. The double page spread by Arthur Adams and Matthew yeah. Wilson. Oh my mm-hmm. God! Yeah, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I just want to point out. Uh, I this is something I've recently got a. Uh, 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 put on to uh, the uh, journey into mystery number one, which is also War of Realms tie-in. Apparently, people uh, there's a podcast called Adventure Zone, and people love it. <laughs> and I wasn't uh, really aware of this beforehand, but the creative, I guess the uh, the father and sons do uh, trio that does the podcast uh, actually also do- is writing this book. So definitely check that out if you're a fan of that. Yeah, I, I saw that too, and uh, mm. my first thought, George, was where do where do we get our when do we get our comic? I I know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, what what are they going to let us write? Well, they're certainly not going to let us write uh, War of the Realms Uncanny X Men number one of three, but right. <laughs> Matthew Rosenberg's writing it, and uh, Pierre Perez is doing the artwork, and the David Yarding cover is beautiful. And I'm a I'm a New Mutants fan from old, especially. When they revealed that uh, Danny Moonstar had some sort of a connection to Asgard. So it's very interesting to see that they're focusing on this New Mutants cast here in this uh, Uncanny X Men tie in to War of the Realms. Mm-hmm. Look at that cover there, though. Man. Yeah, oh, I was about to say, yeah. yeah. Hard, hard to convey again on an audio medium, but beautiful. Mm-hmm. Check the previous website, folks. <laughs> I, I see here on page 23 that they're doing. A 3D. It's a reprint of Mighty Thor number one, but it's it's a 3D version of it. Which oh yeah, mm-hmm. I, I <laughs> this might sound a bit cynical, but I'm like, why? Why do we need a 3D version <laughs> of this book? I mean, it's a beautiful book. I have it. Yeah. I have two copies of Mighty Thor number one, but uh, <laughs> uh, I I don't know that I need a 3D version of it. <laughs> well, Troy, you know, I I did watch. I don't. Uh, was it the last episode or two episodes ago of your previews uh, mm-hmm. YouTube content? And mm-hmm. you you might be able to provide counterpoint because didn't you mention <laughs> something about the X Men three D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I was right. actually going to yeah, I was going to mention like there was an uh, they reprinted um, Uncanny X Men, an issue by Claremont and Jim Lee, and it's the I, everybody's have seen has seen this image. It's the Black Widow, Captain America, Logan cover. I forget which issue that is specifically, but. Um, I, yeah, I'm just I I'm kind of a fan of I I mentioned this on the show. I know that people I know that comic book gimmickry can get a little old. Yeah. I understand <laughs> that. I can play as someone who just mentioned earlier that I kind of fell off in the late '90s, and part of the reason was some of the gimmickry. Um, but at the same time, there's certain things I'm kind of a sucker for, and I feel like I like 3D comics more than I even like 3D movies. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because um, there's I actually own two Superman books. There was one that Richard Donner did with Jeff Johns called The Last Son of Krypton. And like one issue is all 3D. And it's like them in the Phantom Zone. And it's so cool. Ooh. Yeah. That and, would be um, good. Yeah. And um, there's another one. I want to say it was part of Final Crisis that Grant Morrison did. Uh, that yes. was also a 3D one. Was it um, Superman Unbound? No, or am I th- or am I confusing? Something things? like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 I did read um, that one, and I love it. I, you know, I mean, for this in this situation, this book isn't in particular like it doesn't lend it, lend itself to the narrative, which those books did. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of I, I'm I'm a sucker for it. So I'm kind of <laughs> like, you know, I I saw that the Uncanny X Men book had a 3D cover, and I was like a 3D uh, interior, and so I was like, I'm going to order it, and I did. And I'll probably do the same thing for this Mighty Thor thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it's interesting, but you know, there is, it's another thing that Marvel is doing um, because they they've been they've been for the last few months now in previews they've been soliciting these facsimile editions of old yes. titles, old issues, mm-hmm. and now we mm-hmm. get a three D comic. So it's just, it's I just find it really fascinating that they're 
they're exploring these other options for reprint comics. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a good way to give some of these uh, books like additional shelf life. Like I think mm-hmm. that uh, you know they can keep doing the uh, True Believers books, which I think are great, and they yeah. should keep doing those. But I think that you can also kind of like add dangle another carrot in front of people and try to get them to engage with a first an initial run of something or some a little bit of comic book history by you know giving a little three D upgrade mm. and see like you know see how people react to that. So. Yeah. Um, I also want to point out that Avengers No Road Home is something that I've been eyeballing for a yes. while now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of, I, I'll be honest, I kind of glossed over it. And then I started to hear a lot of really good things about Avengers No Surrender, uh, which is the exact same creative team. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, then Marvel floated this image of Conan, <laughs> the barbarian, mm-hmm. being part of the storyline. <laughs> yeah. And to which I was like, Okay, you've got my attention. Like, you got Troy's I'm attention on, now. Troy's yeah. in. Mm-hmm. I'm in. <laughs> well, you know, Marvel's you know, known for and great for cross promoting their mm-hmm. their properties. I mean yeah. you know, that's how Stan and and uh Kirby and, and, and Ditko and the rest, you know, built the Marvel universe. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was a huge fan of that no surrender story from last year to the point when everybody was doing their best of two thousand eighteen episodes. Mm-hmm. No one mentioned it. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking it's one of the, it's almost like the Oscars. What have you done for me lately? The story came out at the beginning of 2018 mm-hmm. and whether or not people even read it, yeah. they, I think they forgot about it. Right. Yeah, Just yeah, like yeah. this year, I, you know, who knows what the, I, I think the quality will be good. You know, we obviously haven't read it yet, but mm-hmm. it, even if it, this is a very good story, I have the f- feeling people will sleep on it when they do their best of 2019. Yeah. So, right, so it right, is right. kind of a shame because I think it, it got ignored in the whole shuffle of, wow, what was the best thing we read this year? I enjoyed it to the point where I could have put it at the top of my list as one of the very best stories I read last year. No, I love that. No, yeah. It's, um, what, the more I do- dove into it, the more I was like, this actually feels like something I would have would have wanted to read if I'd given it a chance. So I'm actually going to go back and actually reread those or actually read those for the first time. You guys were talking about uh, uh, the 90s a little bit ago. Um, I, I wanted to <laughs> point out uh, a, a another yeah. 90s stalwart here. Uh, Rob Liefeld is returning uh, to Marvel Comics with uh, a new mm-hmm. miniseries called Major X. <laughs> so I don't know how, how people feel about Rob Liefeld, but uh, mm-hmm. he's back yeah. with an all-new character. So uh, that'd be interesting right. to find out how that all fits in with the, the X-Men books and, and quite frankly, you know, uh, will this character last in the Marvel universe? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I like, I, I don't like to like pick on Rob Liefeld. Like I know, like he can kind of be the whipping boy of yeah, that's true. the comic world. Um, yeah. Like it, it's interesting because I guess they're going to, these, he, they're retroactively making him part of some of the books that Rob Liefeld worked on, on the, in the X-Men at the time. Oh, so he's okay. kind of, yeah, so like they're they're doing this thing where it's like he's going to be, he was behind the scenes of New Mutants ninety eight and X Force number one and stuff like that. So, <laughs> well, that's an interesting I don't concept. Know. Yeah, I don't know what quite to make of it. So, I'm definitely uh, just going to watch and observe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I do want to point out the uh, there's a there's a book in here, uh, Symbiote Spider Man number one. Mm-hmm. And um, the cool thing about this is it's Peter David. Mm-hmm. Like that's like to me like the big clincher here. Yeah. And uh, Peter David, of course, did uh, he did he was a guy who made me want to read Incredible Hulk. Um, he's the person who got me into X Factor. Um, and he had a run on Spider Man when he was in the black costume um, that I think a lot of people don't don't talk enough about, which mm-hmm. is like he did the story arc was uh, the death of Gene DeWolf. Oh. Um, and he did, that's right. Yeah. 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 And like, he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't, I think it gets kind of like lost in the shuffle because at the time you had like the influx of like the black costume and secret wars and Tom McFarlane following that and venom, all that stuff. But his stuff was really great. And like Mm -hmm. this, this thing that he's doing where I guess it's going to be a, a throwback story from like that takes place during the Spider-Man, his Spider-Man run in the eighties, but it's also mysterious. It kind of loosely ties into far from home, I guess. Um, and also the black costume just always looks cool. So I, (laughs) I'm really, I'm really curious about this. Yeah. And well, you know, you mentioned, um, uh, 
Liefeld being kind of the whipping boy. I know uh, a lot of people don't like Greg Land, generally speaking, uh, but I've I've never had a, a problem with his mm-hmm. art. Um, in fact, I, I kind of like his art. Uh, so having the two of them mm-hmm. together, but yeah, like you said, especially Peter David yeah. doing a Spider-Man book. Yeah, definitely makes me want to want to um, get this eventually. I'm, I'm probably going to get this when it gets collected. Isn't it funny that mm-hmm. social media and or podcasts or maybe even what we read can almost make you feel guilty for liking a particular creator or, yeah. or a particular book? And yeah. I hate that about the whole experience. That's yeah. that's. Uh, I mean, whatever they say about Greg Land, I like his work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do. And like, I think there's another aspect of this that I think people don't think about when they, when they talk about Greg Land is like, the reason he keeps getting work is because he's fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. You know, and yeah. that's, that's something that's very important in the world of like when you're pumping out monthly books. So, yeah. you know, that's how you get 154 some odd page uh, catalog here from Marvel, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody can yeah, pump yeah, out. Yeah. The yeah. Book. yeah. And also actually the sample art featured here actually looks really good. Yes, so it does. Mm-hmm. Mysterio, look, well, Mysterio always looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mysterio yeah. is one of those one of those uh, villains uh, from any any character's line where it's like this should really be stupid, but it, yeah. it just it just <laughs> seems to work. Mm-hmm. And that's a costume you really don't mess with. I mean, look at all the other villain and superhero costumes that have changed throughout the years. That's yeah. pretty much Mysterio yeah. from 1963 or whatever, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love that the movie just upheld that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and you know, you talk about the black costume on the next page. They've got another facsimile edition. Mm-hmm. The first Amazing Spider-Man with the black costume. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. Spider-Man and like, 52. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a prelude to Far From Home, which... Exactly. So, yeah. Funny like, how they is... do that, right? Right. Not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of Spider Man, I'm going to skip ahead just a few pages because this is the this is the big book from Marvel this month for me. Uh, this is the return of Marvel team up, mm-hmm. and you've got Spider Man and Ms. Marvel teaming up for the first issue. This is by Eve Ewing and Joey uh, Vasquez on art. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, the team up books is one of my favorite concepts in in comic book uh, in the comic book industry and. Having this back again is is just a, a nice little piece of joy uh, to me. Mm-hmm. It no, looks yeah, like I, Ms. Marvel is going to be the marquee person and not Spider-Man. Though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. E- even though his name comes first on the cover, I'm led to believe by one of those variant covers that she's going to be the star, not Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that she's going to be kind of the hook. I, from what yeah. I could tell, from what I've what, what I've read, she's mm-hmm. kind of like the mainstay this go around. So we'll yeah. see how that works. Yeah, that that works for me. I, I, yeah. I think that'll be a great uh, uh, modern day update for mm-hmm. for this for this classic book. Yeah. No, I used to love Marvel Team Up because you know we were talking. Uh, I think we were talking uh, before we recorded. Like, no, I said it on the show. Uh, you know, as a kid, you try to get as much bang for your buck, mm-hmm. you know, from your from your allowance or whatever. Like when you're picking up books, and Marvel Team Up was one of those books. I was like, "There's two superheroes in this, so I have to buy it." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, Team Up books and and uh, uh, group books like Justice League right. and Avengers. You know, it's like mm-hmm. more bang for your buck. More yeah, that was one of the book. hooks on the newsstand in the spinner racks, right? When we were kids, yeah. that was the hook. Yeah, that yeah. was the hook. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I'm I'm uh, done with Marvel. So if you guys have anything yeah. else. Um I actually wanted to point out like this is issue number 2. So number 1 was listed last month. But Chip Zdarsky is doing this uh thing called Spider-Man Life Life Story. Oh yeah. And he's going decade by decade and I like I I'm not sure I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but I'm also very curious mm-hmm. about it. Yep. And like, and I've actually kind of uh, Chip Zdarsky's bank of trust has built up with me quite a bit in the last year or so. So like, as a writer, like I like I've really glummed on to like his style of writing, and it looks like it's going to be a real world history, uh, but like alongside the world of Spider Man, the stories of Spider Man at the time. So yeah, I'm very curious about how that's going to pan out. And, and uh, the, the the cover is really interesting with the you know the green goblin um, goblin bomb, but it's mm-hmm. in the form of a, a disco ball. A disco ball, right? Because it's the seventies, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, Why didn't yeah. the green goblin ever think of that? 
Right, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Should have had a disco ball, pumpkin bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes perfect sense. Um yeah, I think uh beyond that, uh I uh, I don't know, George. I was just gonna go through some stuff that I've been eyeballing for a while. Was there anything that uh well, I have some stuff in the back of the book, uh, the back of the uh, Marvel book, you know, uh, merchandise and maybe a trade or two. So uh, mm. why don't you go ahead, Troy? Um, I, I just, you know, I saw them. There's a Marvel's annotated um, that's uh, actively going to be coming out, um, which I think is kind of interesting to like get like a, a, a breakdown of each of each of those gorgeous pages by Alex Ross from that uh, from the, the Marvel series. Um in addition to that, I just read Daredevil number one this past week, so I'm actually that's another Chip Zdarsky book, and uh, I'm on board. So like number four is being solicited this month. Uh, let's see here, there was something else I had bookmarked in here, and now I'm trying to find it. But well, I figure that out, George. If you want to go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll go real fast. Uh, I'm a big fan of Dazzler, but because I'm an old man, I like Dazzler's original look. And uh, there is Speaking a statue. Of disco balls. Yes, yeah, right. there you go. Disco balls. Yeah, <laughs> a nice transition there, right? So for forty nine ninety nine, there's the Marvel Comic Gallery Dazzler PVC diorama in all her uh, nice. early eighties glory. There. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm loving that. Not not like I'm going to pick it up, but it's just nice <laughs> nice to know it exists. And we were right, talking yeah. about team up books, and I don't know if Marvel team up now is coming out based on the success of the Marvel two and one. Chip Zdarsky book that was basically a prelude to the return of the Fantastic Four. But yeah. mm-hmm. if you're a fan of team-up books, on page 114, volume four of Marvel 2-in-1, the Marvel Masterworks collection, the hardcover book collection, is, uh, has Marvel 2-in-1, uh, the original version, uh, number 37 through 46, two annuals, number two and number three, and Avengers annual number seven. Mm. So, that, But of course, you know those go for 75 bucks. But if you average it out, not so bad per issue. No, not at all. And, uh, you know, you don't have to go uh, back issue bin diving. Yeah, right, right. Um, actually, I guess I should point out, this is uh, this is Marvel's 80th anniversary. So you're going to see a lot of um, collections of, like, classic stories and, like, commemorative books and tomes and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, like the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus, which I already own. So I'm all down. I'm, I'm caught up on that one. There but, you go. Uh, you got the Marvel art of Conan the Barbarian, and there's a nice Barry Windsor Smith cover there. Oh, yeah. um, they have Marvel's monster sized hardcover, which is actually very enticing. Um, some stuff that are just like uh, hardcovers are commemorating uh, Kirby and Steve Ditko, and the original Marvel Comics number one from 1938, 39, uh, yeah, something like that. Um, and also, since we were talking about War of Realms earlier, and we were just you know going gaga over the art. This is an art of War of the Realms. So Marvel knew what they had when they. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that might be something that gets picked up as well, just so I can just gawk at it some more. And in fact, since you were saying that it, 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 Jason Aaron's run has pretty much led up to this, mm-hmm. there, there's another collection of his work, Thor by mm-hmm. Jason Aaron, the complete collection, volume one, trade paperback on page 143. So for thirty nine ninety nine, you get Thor, God of Thunder, one through eighteen, and with all the reboots and renumbering, I'm guess and based on the solicit, this is when he started with the God Bomb and the God Butcher. Yep. Yeah. Right. Right. So this might be the collection I want to start picking up yes, because yeah. I have read none of it. Yes, you do, George. Yes, I okay. do. Thank you. But <laughs> the thing that really gets me and is going to, you know, have we always say, here's my wallet, take my money. Mm-hmm. It's on page 142, Star Comics, Planet Terry, the complete collection <laughs> trade paperback. Issues 1 through 12, <laughs> $39.99. I was a Star Comics fan in my teens, mm. and that is why I was bullied. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that I read comics, it was it, that I read Star Comics. Were you bullied in the comic shop, George? I was bullied in the comic shop. I was bullied in 7-Eleven. My mother and my father slapped me around and said, come on. Planetary. Planetary. Come on. I, I didn't even remem- You're better remember than this, this George. comic, George. You don't? No, I, I remember the Star Comics launch, and I remember a few of the titles, but I totally forgot that this was one of them. Yep, I remember no. the character. Yeah, that's about it, though. That's funny. I mean, how much more like Richie Rich could you look? Right, yeah. <laughs> that's right, 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 right. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, uh, beyond that, actually, you know, I wanted to point out, like, when you said planetary, I thought of planetary. Yeah. <laughs> like, I did, too. 
<laughs> Warren Ellis. And I was like, why is that in the Marvel set? Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay, but listen, man, let's let's make a delineation here. Mm-hmm. Planetary by Warren Ellis. Yeah. But then you have a quality work. Oh, right. A historic <laughs> word, planetary, Planet- star com. You know, yes. I was you know. I was going to offer an olive branch here, George, and say that uh, you know, knowing it's Warren Ellis, actually, it'd be, work better. Perhaps it was if it were Grant Morrison, but maybe planetary <laughs> was inspired in some way by planet Terry. Right. <laughs> well, um, I think you're on for, to something. There. <laughs> for anybody who used to listen to my still defunct show, you may know my wife Connie. And my wife, Connie, can hear me here in the Boiler Room studio, and I just got a text, and Connie writes, now I know why you didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank goodness actually, Connie saved you. Yes, yes, she did. Yes. You know, actually, I'm going to say right now, you might be onto something here, because like Planet Terry and Elijah Snow both have white oh, hair. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> There are no mistakes in comics. You're right. That Warren Ellis, man, he's a, he's a hack. He just ripped oh. us off. That is. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, those are some cool things from Marvel. I just wanted to point out. Yeah. Had okay. to be something in a 154-page catalog, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Right, right, right. All right, so uh, the rest of the, the main catalog then. Yeah, let's yeah. have some fun with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, starting off with Dynamite, if anybody has anything for that. Oh, well, I have my, my monthly poem. Can I do my monthly poem? Go right ahead. Okay, because we have a guest. So I wrote the poem for our guest. <laughs> Troy from Previews is here tonight to help us talk about the books from Dino Mai. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> That's channeling my uh, JJ, JJ Walker. JJ Walker, yes. <laughs> I never know where you're uh, going to go with these things, George, but I, I always well, appreciate I it, it when clean. you do. I keep it clean. I, I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you know, I can, we can, I can take a dirty limerick here and there. I'm down <laughs> for it. I keep it clean, and I dare to be redeemed on page 176 <laughs> uh, Okay. with Xena Warrior Princess number one. So just to let people know, Xena's back at Dynamo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, it's written Ayala. by uh, Vida Ayala, who's been blowing up lately. Like, she's yeah. just been all over the place. So. Uh, Good honor. And you guys have a little blurb, little mm-hmm. little interview. So these interviews here, Troy. Yeah. Th- this interview here, uh, that's a previews person talking to Vita, or is this somebody at Dynamite providing this to you guys to put in the catalog? I think it's kind of a, sometimes there's a mishmash. I think this is okay. from Dynamite. I see. Okay. Yeah. I think this is from Dynamite. All right. But sometimes but, uh, you guys interview them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes we do. Like we did it like one last month. It was Steve Aoki, which was us. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. those, those, yeah no. those cool. interviews are generally in, at the beginning of the, or somewhere in the, towards the beginning of the catalog, though, right? Is that what you're referring to? Um, they kind of spread them out now, actually. So okay. you might see some. Like I think there's a Black History Month one that's uh, deeper in the catalog for Lion Forge with uh, one of the main editors there. Mm. So yeah, it's like it's it's it, it. I think it varies based on like you know. Where it should where it should fit. Um, yeah, was there any more dynamite, you guys? So on one ninety three, and I know I'm jumping way ahead. I figured George right. might jump in with a couple other things, uh, but on one ninety three is a John Wick uh, hardcover <laughs> first volume. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, <laughs> my wife does it again. I'm sorry. What? What is it this time? Connie, Connie just wants to remind the ladies out there that I'm taken. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, are there any ladies that listen to this show? That that part I want to know. And then second of all, sorry, ladies, I'm taken. Yeah. Okay, anyway, sorry, Eric, didn't mean to interrupt. It's a good disclaimer. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how, I don't know how you guys feel about the John Wick movies. I love them. Um, yeah. This is this is uh, a, a Greg Pak uh, written comic. With uh, Giovanni Valletta and Matt Gaudio, I think. Uh, mostly, I, I, I pointed this out because it's collecting the the first five issues. But really, what I'm curious about, because like I said, I I, I love the John Wick movies. They're so stylish, beautifully yeah. shot. Um, I really am curious. Do the, how how do they capture that quality of those movies in this comic? So I'm, I'd really like to take a look at this at the very least, just to see. Did they do it well enough? Mm-hmm. Did, I mean, it's a very, 
It's a very specific type of choreography that yes. defines those John Wick movies. So, like, you know, how do you translate that to like the static image of a page? Which right. I don't think is impossible. But no, I'm just no, very yeah. curious. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see. I mean, we see a couple you know, preview uh, preview pages here uh, of the interior, right? But it's hard to tell mm-hmm. based on just those two small pages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I did want to point out, I just read Peter Cannon Thunderbolt number one, yeah. uh, which came out two weeks ago, like, oh, well, last week, and uh, instantly loved it. And um, the cool thing about this, which I didn't even know when I when the issue one was initially solicited, and I had to find out later, is that Peter Cannon is a, he's a British character, he's a UK character, um, and he is the basis for Mendes from Watchmen. Right. Yes. And yeah, and like uh, I, I found that fascinating. And the cool thing about issue number one, I don't want to spoil it too much, but issue number one is pretty much the ending of Watchmen. <laughs> really? Is it? <laughs> it is. And like, so where Watchmen ends, this story begins. Ah. And I thought that was really interesting because Ozymandias is like the villain of Watchmen because he's trying to save the world, quote unquote, right? And so. I'll just stop there, but I found it, I found it really fascinating, and like Kieran Gillen um, is one of those people who I've I've always kind of popped I occasionally pop my head in to find out what he's doing now, mm-hmm. and um, he's just all over the place. He has Wicked and Divine, he does Darth Vader. Um, I think he did a book a few years ago for Marvel that was called Sword, which was just about like beasts and uh, uh, Abigail Brand in space. Yeah, you know. Like he just he he's, he has a very he has a he has a wide range of uh, genres that he likes to play with, and he's very adept at the superhero genre. And this is a fun book. So number four solicited, go check out number one. Wow. You so uh, Troy, this is this was a book that I almost bought uh, when it was you know issue one was solicited because I read a previous version of the character um, several years ago and I really enjoyed it, and the fact mm-hmm. that it's written by Kieran Gillen. Just made me want to get it, but for some reason I decided I was going to wait for it. But now that mm-hmm. you said that, I man, I really wish I'd ordered it and, and kept going with it. Uh. Well, if you want me to, I, I I actually ended up, I kind of goofed and ended up ordering all the variants, so I can send you one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Dynamite's good for that, right? With a lot of variants. Oh yeah, with a lot of variants. Yep. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, they have a lot of variants here for their new hit title, Bill and John Wick's Excellent Adventure. I'm sorry you didn't mention that one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That was in a fever dream. Actually, what I did want to mention though was Amy Chu is back on Kiss mm. on page 180 with Kiss the End number one. Amy, I, I like Amy Chu. When you talk about following creators, don't forget that Mark Russell from Flintstones and Second Coming over at uh, DC right now, uh, he's writing Red Sonia. Uh, number three of that comes down. That's solicited on page 188. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And, you know, here's, here's something interesting uh, that Dynamite's doing. They're doing these Pulp Hero mega sets for $69.99. They, they spotlight... Uh, Four titles in the set, but I believe... Oh, no, no. So, so you get four titles, it looks like. Mm, mm-hmm. And uh, it's a bundle for 70 bucks. Uh, you know, uh, some some different offerings. Uh, Kevin Smith's Green Hornet, Flash mm-hmm. Gordon. But, I mean, uh, here the first set has 10 titles in it. And yeah. actually, so each set has 10 titles. So you're looking at seven bucks a book. Maybe it's worth it if you're interested. Yeah. So check yeah. that out on page 199. Actually, I can tell you the Kevin Smith Green Hornet was actually way better than I expected. Yeah, I, I actually read that. That was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I kind of wish they had made that instead of the Seth Rogen movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't but seen that couple, one yet, so I, apparently I don't need to. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they, they coupled Kevin Smith's Green Hornet with the Shadow, uh, Fire of Creation, and a Flash Gordon Zeitgeist, and I don't know what the other seven titles are, but right there, those three look like the bundle could be worth it. Yeah, if you're interested yeah, yeah. in digging into dynamite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about dynamite, which is something I always like have to be reminded about is like every writer at some point in time has kind of came through their, the has, has done something through for dynamite. And yeah. so like, I like, you know, I was browsing through like, uh, 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 some of the backlog and like, you know, like Warren Ellis did red Sonia. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like there's like Grant Morrison Vampirella, like, you know, like, I mean, there's just like all this cool stuff that like has been written by some of some of the best talent in comics, not even just good talent, some of the best, <laughs> you know, so. But, you know, now that I said it, now I'm waiting for 
Ted and John uh, John Wick's excellent adventure. <laughs> <laughs> the villain, Bill and John Wick's excellent adventure. Sounds like so now George, that's what I want. George, you need to uh, uh, put it out there. Put you know, contact Dynamite and see if they're interested. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, Bill in the phone booth with John Wick. Who survives? I don't know. Yeah. And then you put Plato in the, there and Socrates, and I guess you're okay. Socrates. Uh, Socrates. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, anything else, or should we move on? Yeah, I'm good. I'm cool. Yeah, let's hit it. So, boom. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off with this. Uh, <laughs> this is a, oh, uh, yeah. a, a bit of a, a change for Boom, I think. Uh, this is yeah. Fletcher. Faithless. Maybe, maybe uh, yeah. they saw what G. Willow Wilson was doing with Wonder Woman number 69, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, this is, yeah, this is uh, 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 written by Brian Azzarello. So, you, you know, mm-hmm. right there, you know, something is a little different in terms of yeah. what kind of story you're going to get from a Boom comic. It's um, Boom Black Label. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, illustrated by Maria Lovett. But this is, it says here at the bottom, Retailer Warning, contains erotic and sexually explicit content. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, a, a suggestive cover that they're showing. I heard that uh, they have a, a variant cover that is even more explicit. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I say it's right here on the, on the second page or the, the page after. Mm-hmm. Uh, be bagged and not publicly previewed due to the material. So, um Look at the first page of sample art. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even have I, to read what what it says in the captions. I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. Like, literally. Mm-hmm. No, I was just going to say, like, yeah, it's a it's a, a splash page on the cut, like a sample page on the <laughs> on here, and like both the both the first line and like another part of the page are blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely uh, I mean, going for more adult <laughs> fare with uh, with yeah. this book. So uh, I wonder what else is to come uh, mm-hmm. through Boom that may yeah. be along these same lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's Brian Azzarello. I've always been yeah. a fan of Brian Azzarello, so I'm willing to give it a shot just because it's him. And you know, it's getting a little getting a little kinky here, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what's going on. Uh, but just I w- want to expand on that just a little bit. Uh, it says here, Faith likes to dabble with magic. Her th- her friends think think it's cute, um, uh, but it's part of her charm. And uh, but she's a true believer, and there is a power within her reach. And uh, says at the be- at the end here, faith is bored as hell, and hell has noticed. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm, I'm sure it's it's Azarello, So I'm sure it's got to be an, a very interesting and probably really good story. Mm-hmm. Once you get beyond the the, the titillating aspects of this book. Right. Well, I don't think it's going to let you get beyond it. <laughs> I think that's going to be very much married to the story. Although I want to, I do want to point out that uh, the Paul Pope cover is actually pretty cool, and that is Paul yeah. Pope. Yeah. So. And totally different on the next page, on page two hundred six, plate tectonics mm-hmm. and illustrated yeah. memoir. Original totally graphic different. novel. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay. So at age thirty-five, Mar- uh, the, the writer and artist Margot Motin, you think is how? Yeah. Uh, at age 35, Margot's life is full of upheaval and unexpected twists and turns. She's divorced, raising a child on her own, trying to get back on her feet in today's fast-paced world. When romance eventually returns, it takes on the most unexpected shape, and that of her best friend. Could things possibly get more complicated? We will find out in plate tectonics. Mm-hmm. And I like the uh, sample art here on page 207. So uh, actually, Troy, on your website, a, a, a page like this in print – we would still see the sample art that we would see in print as something that we could click on, on, on the page or how does that work out on the, um, well, if it's on the catalog page, um, uh-huh. it's probably presented as a previews preview. Um, okay. so, you know, it's just one extra click you have to do. Is that it? Yeah. Nice. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Well, since since mm-hmm. we're talking about that, I just want to note, I was going to talk about this earlier, but I forgot, uh, in the digital, the, the PDF version of the catalog that, I, that I'm <coughs> looking at today, uh, there are links, so if you if you see something in the PDF and you want to find out more or go go to the website, there you guys have it linked. So I could click yeah. here and it takes me to the the previews page on nice. on, on the website. So I thought that was kind of yeah. neat. Yeah, yeah. Now the 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 intention is to like you know we know that people engage with comics in a different in different ways. Mm-hmm. So we want to make just make we just want to allow people to engage with comics the way that they want to engage with it. You sure. know. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. 
Mm-hmm. Anything else to boom, guys? Um, let's see here. Well, I'm a big Giant Days fan, so I always call out when they're, well, I mean, Giant Days 49 is coming out, but also on page 220 in the hard, uh, in the physical book, volume 10, the volume 10 softcover collection comes out. Mm. So I always like to call attention to that. Yeah, cool. And on page 212, there is the Hexed Omnibus, mm. collecting all of, all 16 issues of the original Hex Limited series. Now, this is something that I was aware of, but have not read. But then when I read this uh, solicitation text here for for the book, um, uh, a, featuring a supernatural thief for hire, I just that idea just sounds really cool. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to I'd like to check that out. Yeah. And that's it for me for Boom. Right. Same, Same here. That's it for me for Boom. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now we're getting into the. Uh... Okay, so now, Troy, you've said you've been on a few other shows before. So I, I would wonder, how deep do other shows go? I mean, do, um, they, mm-hmm. do, do they ignore, for, for the most part, ignore this part? Do they focus on it, try and spotlight some things? How, how do other people handle it? Um, well, you know, I've done shows that are, like, just Marvel DC focused. I've done mm-hmm. shows that are just indie focused. And I've done shows uh, that just go through the entire catalog. Mm-hmm. Um, so so runs the gamut. Mm-hmm. So it runs the gamut, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I think good. most people, most people stop at the toy section and just leave it at that. <laughs> um, but like, uh, oh, I have something in the toy section this time around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, All right. I'm down for it. I'm with it. Um, I, you know, I mean, like, uh, if uh, I don't know how deep you guys want to jump into the comics and graphic novel section, mm-hmm. um, but I definitely have some some things that I've definitely have earmarked here that I think I have, is of interest. Okay, well, I know I have one kind of like at the start, if I may. Mm-hmm. Actually, it might be the same one I have. <laughs> yeah, is it from Action Lab? Uh, is it Action Lab? No, I'm sorry, it's not. Okay, so uh-huh. at Action Lab, there is the sequel to Spencer and Locke by mm-hmm. David Pepos and uh, Jason Smith and Jorge Santiago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spencer and Locke 2, I enjoyed Spencer and Locke 1, and that is basically a noir version of Calvin and Hobbes. I don't know how else to yeah. describe it. And it's yeah. It really... Mm-hmm. Ultra violent, ultra bonkers. Uh, it's what if Calvin and the, Calvin grows up, but uh, Hobbes is still his imaginary stuffed animal friend. But uh, they're both on the police force somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, there were yeah. some there were some twisted versions of Calvin and Hobbes characters in that uh, Calvin and Hobbes characters in that first uh, four issue miniseries. I can't mm-hmm. wait to see what David Pepos does here with the second version, the uh, second volume. Yeah, yeah. That was another book that, like, I don't think I got it initially, and then, like, I actually delved into what it was. I was like, "Oh, that's what this is." Yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. And it's it's actually a very fascinating premise. It is. Did, George, you know, did have they come out with a trade for that first those that first uh, uh, version edition? You know, I think they did yeah. pretty much right after, like, did they? like a company usually does. But I'm surprised that they didn't solicit yeah. it in the last couple. Maybe they did, and did we bring it up? I don't remember. That's that's the thing. I don't remember that uh, ever seeing a trade uh, uh, solicited for this. But I, you know, I could have, I obviously could have just missed it because I, I, I wanted to there, read that. I'm surprised there isn't an offer again. Yeah, too. You know, exactly. like sometimes they do that when something like this comes out. So yeah, I think there sh- there should be a. I'm pretty sure there's a trade for this one. Maybe, maybe it was a maybe even also resolicited in a previous previews like a month or so ago to maybe. prepare us for this. I definitely I have to go yeah. uh, search that out because I want to read that book. Yeah, actually, yeah, I only see volume one in here, uh, like on our on our website. Mm. And oh, oh, so it is available for uh, for purchase. Yeah, there is, is a that, volume is one. That... Oh, good. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a volume one trade. Yeah. I'll have to oh, there, there, you go, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, I want to jump back real quick to page 230 and 231 because this is um, mm-hmm. a, a bla- another yeah. Black History Month bl- uh, backlist, and mm-hmm. we've got a bunch of a bunch of different things uh, from various publishers. We talked about some of the stuff before, but uh, I wanted to to point out a couple of these real quick. One is uh, Fire the Zora Neale Hurston story, mm-hmm. um, uh, which is from uh, Drawn and Quarterly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know if any, if either of you have any uh, read any of Zora Neale Hurston's work, yeah. but uh, mm-hmm. I read her book. Um, Their eyes were watching God years yep. ago, yeah. and what an amazing piece of work that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a that's a required reading. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's required reading where I come from. So. <laughs> yeah, it's yes, just, it's just a beautiful it. story. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have... Uh, uh, I'll have I, to educate myself on that. Uh, Black Superheroes, Milestone Comics, and their fans mm -hmm. uh, from the University Press of Mississippi, which I don't often see a University Press listed in preview, so I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of stuff like that, actually, which is very like focused on the particular history of uh, something in comics mm -hmm. or cartooning. Yeah. And then, um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I was just going to say, uh, there's actually one that I have actually on my shelf right now, and it's. Uh, oh, I, I keep forgetting. We're not. We're. We're. we're, we're, we're this is not video, even though we're. We're Skyping. I actually <laughs> have the oh, yeah. I have the Muhammad Ali book from uh, Dark Horse, oh, which nice. was actually really great. Oh, and cool. um, yeah, and that's actually one of the ones featured here. And like, yeah, that's just a great, great book about a about the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, definitely check that out. And uh, there's an adaptation of Octavia Butler's Kindred, um, Black Comics Returns, which features some amazing art by a bunch of really great black artists. And uh, I also have to point out Malika because I. Um, Actually, I uh, have uh, talked to um, the guy who runs Unique Studios quite a few times, and he's uh, very, very impassioned about like you know reaching out to comic shops, but also getting his particular stories about his uh, about Nigerian culture out there. So that's actually a really great one to check out. Yeah, that that cover for Black Comics Returns that that image is just the coloring of yeah. that is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I wish they would resolicit? Uh, did either of you ever read Watson and Holmes? No. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And Stephen Harris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I, I think they kind of, well, I mean, I don't know how their publishing works, but it's almost like they kind of slept on it because that stupid movie that was released around the holidays, Watson and Holmes with Will Ferrell and um, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm blanking on the other guy's name, but. I, they should have made a movie out of the Watson and Holmes comic. Well, I remember there was going to be a TV show for a really long time. I mean, and that would I don't have been know. awesome. That was a great yeah. book. And, and to have a collection of that, especially for Black History Month, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. surprised that they didn't. I, I mean, they're, they're a very small publisher. So I, I guess maybe it just wasn't financially feasible for them. But that's, that's a book that should be in more hands, I think. I think, uh, well, I think for us uh, in particular, it boils down to what's still in stock. And I mm -hmm. think that was like, I think the company was like New Paradigm or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they, their book, the book might not be still in stock anymore. That might be the right. issue here. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, it's, it's something worth checking out. And, yeah. and Stephen Maybe Harris is actually a friend. Yeah, is he? yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's a friend is he of a mine. Local, is he a local guy here in the uh, DMV, um, as we like to call it here in this area of the country? <laughs> um, I think he's a he's a right, yeah, the DMV, right? <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Um, no, he's uh, from a. Uh, uh, I want to say he's from. De uh, don't make me a liar. Okay, uh, no, I, was that's a, from, I was gonna say he's from Detroit, but I don't think that's true. But he's not but, from the yeah. Atlantic area. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. But yeah, but yeah, like, if you I get a chance, definitely at a check it out. Uh, at the time when. I don't know if it had just finished or it had just started, but they seem like pretty nice guys, pretty talented, yeah. pretty nice guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What else we have guys? I want to point out, uh, because I'm a huge fan of Terry Moore and I'm currently reading, uh, it's almost over with, but, uh, here we have this solicitation for strangers in paradise, 25, the omnibus collection, collecting mm -hmm. that, uh, that, uh, that series. Well worth it. And, and, you know, it's an omnibus. It's only, I think it only collects 10 issues uh, of the well, series. That's all there were, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. But it also ha contains um, uh, sketches and behind the scenes notes uh, from Terry Moore. And, you know, the hardcover version is only 40 bucks. So that's, mm. that's an affordable omnibus. <laughs> yeah. That is, yeah, that's true. And you consider what you get in it, too. Well, I'm going to jump to Aftershock. If anybody doesn't have anything before Aftershock, uh, no, I don't have anything before Aftershock. All right. I mean, I mentioned Adam Glass before, so I'm just going to mention his book, Mary Shelley, Monster Hunter, mm -hmm. uh, written by Adam Glass. With uh, oh, and also he's joined by writer Olivia Briggs, and the artwork is by Hayden Sherman. Hmm. And, oh, and Sal Cipriano, the letterer, is back. He was the letterer on Rough Riders. He was on your show, Eric. Nice. Uh, he was a good guy, and. Uh, I mean, this is basically what if Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein because she experienced it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he, this looks like an interesting concept. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, Adam Glass is certainly 
mining a particular uh, uh, genre or subgenre yeah. uh, of mm-hmm. stories that sure. I think is just really cool. I do too. I mean, if they don't go back to Rough Riders someday, I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm going to jump what ahead else? to um, uh, Ahoy Comics. Yeah. So this is on yeah. page 252. Uh, this is wave two of their books, uh, yeah. Bronze, Bronze Age Boogie, which is a, <laughs> you know, a, a 70s take uh, of com- uh, or a, a story. And then they have Planet of the Nerds, which is set in the, well, has characters who are from the 80s. Um, so they're 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 mining that uh, decades kind of uh, vibe of uh, putting it into, into comic form. So one is kind yeah. of a sword and sorcery, martial arts, disco era uh, book, and then the other one is um, what does it say here? Uh, you got uh, three high school jocks from the eighties are accidentally frozen uh, and uh, cryogenically and revived in two thousand nineteen, where an era in an era ruled by nerds. You know, so mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. might be really mm-hmm. interesting to, to 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 check out. Yeah, Troy, what do you no. and your coworkers think about Ahoy? Have you guys uh, been reading them or what? Yeah, I actually got a chance to interview um Tom Payer. I, I always a, yeah, I got to interview Tom Payer and uh, Stuart Moore at uh, Baltimore where would we Comic Con uh, or read about this interview. Um, it should be. I'd be very interested to hear it or read it. However, whatever media you have it in. Yeah, I think uh, I think we put it onto. I think it's actually part of a compilation of like uh, us asking uh, creators like how they got into comics, uh, which was on our show. Uh, okay. Like I think Great. so. I'll um, try and to, that. Yeah, I have, to, I have to remember which episode. But um, the cool thing about it is like I, you know, uh, we approached them. I had someone else was approaching people for interviews, and then uh, they handed me their names, and I was like, oh. I know both. I know who both of these people are. Like I read, I read his Spider Man and I read his Howard the Duck. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, um, and they hand fed me a, a copy of uh, the Wrong Earth. Yes, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, re- I'll read it, I'll check it out, I'll take a look at it later. And I went back, and it probably took me about two weeks to read it, and then I read it, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, and actually, I think issue number six was my pick this week of the wrong earth is like the last issue of it. And I actually tapped Stuart Moore on the shoulder, like, you know, by email to interview him for bronze age boogie, because this is another book that is like firmly up my alley. So, oh, so, so there will be an upcoming interview with Stuart Moore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. um, it'll, it'll be a written interview, but, uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, I'm going to ask him about this series because, uh, it's invoking, like a lot of things that I love, like you know the kung fu, the the black exploitation vibe, the barbarian, the like. Yeah, it's just absolutely perfect. I have said it on pretty much every episode of Eric's show that I have been on since Ahoy started, and I'm going to trumpet it again. I have every issue of every comic they put out. Mm-hmm. Have not been disappointed with one of them. They've only had four titles mm-hmm. up until now, and they'll come to an end, and then these will start. And I think there might be two more. I know mm-hmm. they're going to put out one called Hashtag Danger, which has been a backup story in, in, a, in a lot of their comics. Okay. Uh, I forgot what the fourth one is going to be, but I'm excited for these, and I love this company, mm-hmm. which is yeah. why I'm very interested to hear what these guys have to, had to say to you on, on your show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, uh, they, they're, I believe they're – I'm going to probably butcher the uh, – their slogan, but it's it's something along the lines of get more out of comics. Mm-hmm. And you really do get that when you're reading their stuff because there's tons of supplemental material, like, you know, the story, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Like, everyone who's worked on any of these books is seasoned. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they are just, these are top quality creators uh, putting out some just great work. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ahoy. I, I have uh, enjoyed the back matter so much, just as much as the main matter, mm-hmm. that I have tweeted about the backup stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell, telling people out there, do not sleep on, the, on these little short stories that, that happen in the back of this book because they're awesome. If, if one really strikes me, I tweet about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, as you should, because like, yeah, their the supplemental material is only adding to the experience, and you're definitely getting your money's worth. Yeah. Looking forward to what else they have. That's great. Mm-hmm. All right. I know some people will pass over American mythology, but I'm just going to say real quick, 
a, a new Laurel and Hardy comic. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> well, you know, I love them because they're doing the uh, they're doing a hundredth anniversary thing for Zorro too, which is actually really cool because mm, yes. Zorro's been around for a hundred years, which is really yeah. impressive. So yeah. hard to imagine, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I, if uh, did, is there a, was there? A, I'm, I'm also in the A's, but I'm also eyeballing the Jughead versus Jughead the Hunger versus mm-hmm. Vampironica. Mm. Um, I like. I have not read Jug- Jughead the Hunger, but I have read Vampironica, and I am a big fan of Archie doing horror comics. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm I'm very intrigued by this 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 versus book that they have coming up. Like I think it'll be really interesting. the The Vampironica book is drawn beautifully. Like it's just a beautifully drawn book. Like it just looks amazing, and I've always been a Jughead fan, so <laughs> I'm into the idea. Of, I'm into the idea of the guy who's like the hamburger guy, just like going around trying to eat humans. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like a perfect fit, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was uh, anything else you guys were taking a look at here? I, my next thing is on page three hundred nine. Mm-hmm. So, George, do you have anything in between Archie and and uh, graphics? Uh, I do, and I'll mention them real quick. Uh, I am a big Charles Schultz Peanuts fan, and on page 281, there is a hardcover book called For the Love of Peanuts. Mm. Uh, Launched in early 2018, the Peanuts Global Artist Collective, which features dozens of commissioned pieces by seven high-profile distinguished artists, has been an international sensation that includes major public art displays in more than seven cities around the world. The artist selected to reinterpret the work of Charles Schultz, and then they give a list of all the artists here, are, are represented in this book. And I do like to see, I have, I have another book that celebrated, I forgot how many years it was of Peanuts, but I have a book of other artists' interpretations of the characters, whether they did their own strips or they just made these beautiful paintings or collages. And a book like this does uh, attract my attention. When when mm-hmm. uh, they they celebrate the the art of uh, Charles Schultz, so mm-hmm. I call that to people's attention. Yeah, nice little bit, a nice bit of a cartooning history there for sure. Yeah, there's there's just something about it, and because you know he's no longer with us, and he had retired anyway prior to his death. But I mean, mm-hmm. classic Peanuts is still in the paper every day, mm-hmm. every day, every, every day, every Sunday. So it's uh, I, I don't know. It's just part of my. I, I used to read the paper and the comics in the paper all the time. So it just means. <laughs> Some to me, and then on page 292, a book by Malaka Garib. I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, and I apologize. I Was Their American Dream by uh, from Clarkson Potter Press. Uh, and it's basically uh, an, Im- an immigration story, is, is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but it seems very interesting. It's 1699 for 160 pages, soft cover. Uh, Malacca's illustrations come alive with teenage antics and earnest questions about identity and culture while providing thoughtful insight into the lives of modern immigrants and the generation of millennial children they raised. So I'm hmm. kind, of, kind of interested in that. Yeah. Ch- child of an immigrant myself. So, you know, and, and it's in the news. So, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a, a, another perspective. And for Black History Month on page 295, Satchel Page striking out. Jim Crow graphic novel. So a graphic novel about the great Satchel Page. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah I I'm guess... A base- uh, I'm a baseball fan, so you know. I- <laughs> right, right. right. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, for me, like uh, the next thing for me is like, uh, there's a book called Dark Rage from Humanoids, which I actually just discovered this past week. Hmm. Um, the artist is actually Terry Smolderin. Who uh, we were talking earlier about magnetic collection. Terry did a uh, did Ghost Money. So yeah, we were talking about Ghost Money earlier. He's the That's artist right, of Ghost yeah. Money. So mm-hmm. yeah, and it's an interesting concept because it's basically about two wives who see their husbands uh, murdered, and once the police, once the justice system doesn't do anything, they branch out onto their own and start taking matters into their own hands. So it's very interesting. Uh, a very interesting crime book, and like that, I love how dynamic the cover is, even though it's a, a very small image on the, uh, in the catalog itself. I'll tell you, Humanoids has a lot of good stuff. I mean, in addition to that, on page three twelve, offered again, they have. Uh, I think we mentioned this mm-hmm. when it was first offered, uh, Eric. Uh, uh, the Cabo Disco: How I Managed Not to Be Abducted 
in Afghanistan. Plus, they have the Snow Day trade paperback, the Young Mozart trade paperback. I mean, they're putting out some really good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to note the Snow Day trade because that sounds like a really uh, cool story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Humanoids is definitely one of those uh, publishers in in the back of the catalog where I definitely pause and read through everything they have. Yeah. I mean, they're all great. I mean, what you mentioned, Troy, these other books. I mean, Snow Day, just to let everybody know, it's not a kids on a snow day it's an outside <laughs> right. show. He struggles to find his place in an isolated snow covered town populated by hard people who are set in their ways dunk, dunk, dunk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but this young mozart book also looks this looks like a nice all ages book yeah yeah you know, it does. it's just oh and i think it comes with sheet music or some or, or some sort of music i think it does. Yeah, it does uh, yeah uh, included young mozart's playbook play and learn with the musical legend so that's cool yeah, no, it's actually really neat. I like in general. I think uh, is the Mozart book humanoids too. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, like humanoids, like you know, known primarily for uh, a lot of the Euro comics, um, which I also own a few of, um, and those are always gorgeous, always great. But like they've also been branching out into more like uh, slice of life stuff, and soon they're going to be launching a superhero line with John Cassidy and Mark right. Waite. Yeah. So, yeah, just all really interesting things to look out for. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, kid-friendly books, uh, I want to go jump back to page three hundred nine. Uh, this is this is uh, Raina Telgemeier's mm-hmm. "Share Your Smile," which is her guide to telling your own story. Hmm. Uh, so this was announced some months ago, uh, and so she's coming out with this, and then later in the year she's coming out with another book. But this is this is, I think, a lot of. Uh, where we're going to get some great comic book writers and artists coming in, you know, years from now because yeah. of Raina Telgemeier, because, uh, she's, she's, you know, sold millions of books with, with, uh, uh, through graphics. Um, I've become a fan of hers because my, my granddaughter Madison brought home one of her books and uh-huh. was reading. And I'm like, let me, let me take a look at that. And now we own all of her books uh, uh, I've even podcasted with my granddaughter talking about Smile, the original book that Raina came out with, uh, because she loves it. So, uh, my granddaughter loves it so much. And now to have this, I got to get this book and I got to give it to Madison because she 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 wants to create her own comic book. She just the other day, George told me she wants she wants she and I to go into business together to make comic go. books. Nice, nice. Like, See, it all comes around. Eric, didn't we say that to our, our parents uh, yeah. like 30 years ago, you know, 40 years ago, Could you whatever? imagine what response we would have got from our parents about that? Oh, Come on. please. <laughs> it would not have so, flown in my house. So the <laughs> subtitle of that is uh, How to Write and Draw Comics the Raina Tel- Telgemeier Way. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, hey, learn, from a, learn from a superstar because that's yeah. definitely what she is. Yeah. So, hey, and you talk about uh, good stuff for young readers on page 303 from Fantagraphics. I just have to call it out. The title's enough said. The Complete Life and Times of Uncle Scrooge, Volume 1. I mean, <laughs> what more do you want? Yeah. Goodness by, uh, Duck Goodness by Don Rosa. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, this Raina uh, Tegelmeyer book, everybody's been looking forward to this, right, Eric? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, comic book stores, bookstores. She, she, she's Libraries, a... Uh, it's going to be everywhere. It, yeah, she, yeah, she brings people in. So mm-hmm. that, that's a good thing for all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my next uh, book here, uh, is not, it's not a comic book per se, but it is about comics. This is on page 337. I thought this was interesting. The Forensic Comicologist, Insights <laughs> from a Life in Comics by Jamie Newbold. <laughs> so, uh, he was, uh, he's a comic book fan turned comic book retailer. Uh, uh yeah. Uh-huh. Then he soon discovered the prevalence of scams in the world of comics collecting. And so this book is his, as it says, tutorial on how to collect wisely and reduce risks. Yep, so, I have that flagged. Yeah, really? Okay. I, <laughs> that just sounds very interesting to me. <laughs> I love it. Actually, right next to it is actually something that's near and dear to my heart, the British comic ah, book yes. invasion. Mm. Uh, like, a, like a, a, I guess, a history of like how uh, the 80s and early 90s um, – had a uh, rejuvenated comics, but it came from uh, came from uh, from the British uh, creators, mm-hmm. uh, the UK creators. 
Um, I actually also want to point out, I mean, we talked about this earlier, but Infinity 8, number 11, is in this must catalog. Mm-hmm. And everybody should read Infinity 8. I just think it's just a fun, fun book. Like, I, uh, on the show, like, a few weeks ago, like, I was talking about the previous arc in Infinity 8, uh, which, is, which was about a spy who likes to take selfies. <laughs> and how and how counterproductive that is, <laughs> um, and you know, and in the midst of all that is like this plot to like resurrect Hitler. Oh, uh, yeah, like, awesome. yeah, like yeah, it's just it's it's just nuts. It's just insane, and it was like such a breath of fresh air when I just randomly read it. Like I think it was like one Sunday morning. I was like, I'm really glad I read this. This is actually <laughs> a lot of fun. Just fun, a fun, fun series of three issue stories. That, that they, like, just you, out. you just told me about about uh, the the spy taking selfies mm-hmm. reminded me of a plot point in the show Barry from HBO. Did you guys see Bill Hader and Henry Winkler's show Barry? No. Uh-uh. Well, Barry is a hitman, very good at his job, but he's a little burnt out, and he wants to pursue acting. Mm-hmm. So when he goes into Henry Winkler's acting class, uh, everybody in the class is asking him about his social media presence, and he doesn't have one because he's a hitman. <laughs> So they encourage him to create a social media page and he changes his name, but his picture's there. So mm-hmm. of course people find him via his Facebook page <laughs> and, and none of that goes well. But I mean, that's, that's what that reminded me of. That's funny. <laughs> and you know, line, line forge does, does a whole mess of stuff under their different imprints. So earlier yeah. in their section on page 326, they have the underfoot volume one, the mighty deep. And then they also, on the next page, on 328, have the Ballad of Yaya, book one. Mm. Uh, I guess it's, it's Fugue. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. But mm-hmm. both of these look very interesting for maybe maybe the underfoot might be for younger readers, whereas the Ballad of Yaya might be maybe teens. And, well, they're both helping hands, so I guess maybe younger readers. Mm. Mm-hmm. See, One is Caracal, so that's the younger brand, and I think Magnetic could be teens. Is that right, Troy? Is that how that goes? Uh, you know, actually, I'm not sure. Like, actually, it's a very good question. I wish I could answer that, but, yeah, but I think like they, they have so many imprints, I can't keep up. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. And, you know, going uh, back to the page you guys were on uh, a little while ago on page 336, Eric, your, your, your granddaughter might be interested in Middle School Misadventures by mm-hmm. Jason Platt. Mm-hmm. So just calling that out there for younger readers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Eric, what uh, else did you say you had? Or, or Troy? Um, yeah, there was only one other thing I had in here, which was uh, Adder Adder Gull, mm-hmm. which is uh, from Titan Comics. It's from the creator of The Death of Stalin, which actually I think just got nominated for an Academy Award. That's right. A lot of people um, don't realize that came from a comic. Yeah, it was originally a comic. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think to actually to Titan's credit, I think they knew that they had something great on their hands because they were pushing it pretty hard before the movie came out. So. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just an interesting, it's a, a slavery revenge story. It's one of the Black History Month titles. Um, so something to look out for too. And like a lot of this tight, like a lot of the Titan stuff, it's a European comic. So. Jerick, I'm not the only guy who likes European comics. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Makes, makes me want to read more of these things. Yeah, awesome stuff. <laughs> I'm going to jump back to Oni Press for one thing, uh, real quick, sure. just because I enjoyed this book so much as it's coming, uh, as it's been coming out. Um, uh, this is Shadow Roads. It's uh, the first collecting the first. It's the first volume collecting uh, issues one through five of that series. It was kind of a, a surprise hit to me uh, in terms of how much I liked it, and I didn't realize that they were even going to be doing this book. Um, it just kind of was there one day, and I ordered it because it's it's done by Colin Bunn and Brian Hurt, um, and uh, AC uh, Zamudio on art. So uh, you know if you if you liked. Uh, Colin Bunn and Brian Hurt's Six Gun, uh, also from Oni, then uh, I know you'll like Shadow Roads, so people should check that out. Yeah, actually, that's interesting. That's a, a great pitch because I actually really did like Six Gun. So, yeah, I actually will check this out because I, I kind of didn't uh, quite catch this one before. And then uh, my final thing uh, out of the previews book on page 386 and 387, as I'm frantically pushing my, the button to get down to that page <laughs> in, in here. This is uh, Queen of Bad Dreams from Vault uh-huh. um, by Jordi Perez and Dirbla Kelly. Just uh, uh, 
a character having or a story having to do with dreams and uh, what they, what they call figments uh, mm-hmm. sounds really interesting. But I mostly I really dug the the um, uh, the variant cover image, which is an homage to the old DC book, uh, Madame Xanadu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love that. I love when they, <laughs> when they do that. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, Bolt's done a couple of those like that, where it's just like a, a, a th- just a straight up throwback uh, cover to like uh, like comics of uh, yesteryear. So that's really cool. Uh, I had two on page one on page three sixty and three and one on three sixty one from Silver Sprocket. I think our friend Dan might be a dolphin one shot. A five dollar twenty page book, <laughs> and I'm just going to give you the quote at the top of the solicit. It's by James Stanton, by the way. He tried to pass it off as back sweat, but there's no mistaking a blowhole stain on the back of a shirt. Well, hey, you know, you don't re- need to read any more. Sign me up. Right? <laughs> then on page 361 from Source Point Press, you have floppy cop number one. Now, you would think it would be about floppy copies of comics, like everybody calls them floppies. But no, it's by Dan Doherty and Seth the Moose. And join in on the absurd adventures of a cop who is bending over backwards for justice because he has no spine in his body. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, together with a colorful cast of funny characters, Floppy has to solve the puzzles of a new criminal crossword or Christmas might be ruined in the town of White Trickle Falls. So, Eric, if I buy this book, this might be part of our Christmas gab bag at the end of the year. <laughs> That's right. Nice. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So shout out to Source Point Press, actually. Yeah. yeah they're Michigan based and like, yeah, they've actually been uh, very uh, enthusiastic about like, you know, reaching out to comic shops as well. So, yeah. Now, do they do that through you guys when they do stuff like that? Do they say, hey, can you put us in touch with comic shops or like, do they go through you guys or what do they, how do they do Uh, that? No, they definitely do. I mean, that's part of the deal is like once you get in the catalog, we put you mm-hmm. we, we try to give you like, you know, a bunch of different packages as an independent publisher, like to like make sure that your book is getting in front of uh, publishers. That's nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, on top of that, like, yeah, they just have been they've gone the extra mile with us and have like, you know, uh, made sure to share and like our our videos and, you know, like talk with us and like our Twitter feed and just make sure that they're engaging the audience and engaging us and, you know, just try to create some sort of mutual admiration for them, which I think is important. So mm. and I encourage all publishers to do that. So, Troy, did you have anything else in the in the main book, in the book, the back of the book? Um, I mean, like I was definitely there's some toy stuff that I was eyeballing, but I'll, I'll hold off on that. For okay. next time. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, usually on the show here, we do great titles and manga. So on page 436, mm-hmm. didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? Volume three <laughs> by Funa and Neko Mint. Mm-hmm. So check that out. So didn't I say to didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? I guess that's how you're supposed to say it. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so great titles and manga, folks. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, Troy. I, I, I don't. I know. I know you got to go. Your time is limited. But if I don't call Sorry. this out, everybody is gonna, you know, go on social media and say, George, why, why didn't you talk about this? This was made for you. Now, why am I having trouble finding finding it? <laughs> Where is? Oh, did I did I not see it in here? Am I jumping the gun? Didn't I see? Oh, you know what? I might have saw it on Twitter. Uh oh. So you know what? Maybe it's uh, okay. I'm I'm just going to say it. Troy, eventually in previews, you guys are going to be soliciting Funko Pops of the Golden Girls cosplaying as superheroes. Oh my gosh! I'm in. Uh Oh, so when you guys put that in the book, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you right now, Sophia is Captain America. I I tweeted about it. (laughs) I'm into it. I'm into it. (laughs) I think they announced it at Toy Fair or whatever happened. uh, Uh, Okay. Okay, so, uh, and I think uh, Blanche is Harley Quinn. And I forget. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now Dorothy I can't get that image out of my brain. Thanks, Drew. Right, Dorothy, yeah. uh, Dorothy might be Batgirl and Rose might be Robin, if I remember correctly. So, you know, Eric, with your Dick Grayson mm-hmm. fanhood, you have to get the Rose version. <laughs> there you go. There you yeah. go. Now, is, is Blanche like Margot Robbie, like Harley Quinn, or. Bruce Tim Harley Quinn. <laughs> well, you know Good question. They, they, they wound up using the same mold okay. as, as a Blanche, so she doesn't have the pigtails. Uh, uh, but you know, Blanche, you know, she's showing she's showing skin. You know, yeah, that's that's how go. she is. She's a yeah. vamp. She's that's, a vamp. That's how that's how it goes. 
Oh my gosh. She, she's granddaddy's little monster. <laughs> there you go. Oh, right. <laughs> Now I think about it, I think it was like one of those breaking news from toy, whatever. From toy fair. And, mm-hmm. uh, what it's, it's that time of year. Yeah. People yeah. are announcing stuff ahead of toy fair. Yeah. yeah so, uh, <laughs> be preview soon, folks. Watch out for it. I hope so. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> hopefully on your desk very soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> coming to my desk near, uh, coming to a desk near you. Listen, <laughs> listen, I, wa- I want you to think of me when you guys bring it up on the show. Because okay. you know when you see it, you're going to put it on the show because you're okay. going to remember it. Yeah. I'm going to remember if it does. If it does pop up, I'm going to ask them if we can do a prize pack, a prize <laughs> giveaway for it. That would oh, be great. Oh, you know going to flood your email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, I think that's it, gentlemen. Right, we're we're done yeah. with uh, the catalog this time. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, Troy, thank you so much for, uh, first of all, for reaching out to me uh, and, and yeah, be no willing problem. to do this. Uh, it's been wonderful talking with you uh, and, and learning a bunch of stuff about previews and, and what you do there. Um, not to mention just uh, a different perspective for things that, uh, uh, that you picked out here and in, in, in spotlighted uh, in the catalogs. So I uh, really appreciate that. Oh, thank uh, you. Love to have you on again to talk about some other things in the future if, you, yeah, if you're willing to do that. Yeah, uh, if, but it, you know, uh, as as we always do um, uh, on the show, if uh, uh, you would like to have people reach out to you uh, on social media and whatnot, how how can they find you? How can they uh, talk with you about various things from the previous catalog or other other things they'd like to discuss with you? Um, well, you know, I encourage people to definitely just find us uh, online on every pretty much all the major social media platforms. Uh, just at Previews World. Um, I, you know, I take care of the Twitter, I take care of the Facebook, I take care of our Instagram, so, and our YouTube. So, you know, you will, you will be able to reach me and the easiest way to do it. Yeah, so everybody go, go out right now and, and subscribe and, and, uh, interact. Yeah. And George, uh, where can they find you and, and, and interact with you and tell you you're crazy for loving the, Gil- uh, I see almost the Gilmore <laughs> girls, the golden girls as much as you do. <laughs> Well, I am still at George and Tony on Twitter with the old George and Tony show moniker and on Facebook, which I promised I was going to go back on uh, a little more frequently, but I I have not kept that promise, but it's still George and Tony entertainment, but the site will be under construction because I have some new co-hosts and the George and Tony entertainment show will now be finally replaced by something else in the near future. So stay tuned. Something that we will be talking about hopefully very soon on, on, on this show. Mm-hmm. All right. And if people would like to uh, uh, send me comments, uh, compliment uh, George and, and Troy, uh, <laughs> and I'll <laughs> gladly pass those along, uh, please email me at longboxreview at gmail.com. Leave comments at the blog, or you can also uh, talk with me on Twitter at longboxreview. So with that, gentlemen, thank you again so much for joining me on, on the, this February previews episode, and I will talk to everyone later. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.